with this time. I go for mine. I get to shine. Now throw your hands up in the sky. Go go for mine. I get to shine. Now throw your hands up in the sky. Hey everybody, uh, it's another this week in startups. Thanks for coming. This is episode number. 28. Holy cow, we've been doing this for 28 weeks, or maybe more, because we do some bonus episodes. Um, last week, great show. It's probably going to wind up being one of our most downloaded shows. Anytime we have an entrepreneur on who's had a really successful exit, uh, that's a big draw for people. And today we have um, an equally big, I think it's actually maybe the same or hmm, same company um, that bought Matt's company. Uh, but let's start off by thanking our sponsors. Um, Wow, uh, the show is doing great in terms of sponsorship, in terms of production quality, in terms of quality of guests. Is really uh, the feedback we've been getting, Tyler, is phenomenal. It's on fire. Bro. It's on fire. On fire is the, it would be the right word. Uh, if you look on the pound twist hashtag, people are using the pound twist hashtag all week. Now people have sort of started using it on Twitter just to promote stuff. So like when they <laughs> they know that the it's sort of like they're spamming the pound twist tag. So they'll put on the pound twist tag, oh, you know, I'm doing a new startup. But I said, twist sort of, this week in startup stands for I'm doing something startup related. Mm -hmm. So I see people on there looking for founders and all that kind of great stuff. Uh, but thank you to WebSpy, WebSpy for sponsoring the show, uh, doing uh, internet and email analyzation with their software. If you don't know what's going on in your network, they do a great job in diagnosing problems and strengthening your security. Everybody should go check out WebSpy and thank them on Twitter at WebSpy. DNA Mail, DNA Mail, everybody loves DNA Mail, uh, one of our sponsors from the beginning, like WebSpy. And uh, they do hosting of uh, web, um, web email, like Exchange and all that kind of stuff, which is a pain in the ass to set up. If you are uh, familiar with it, I know I used to be a network administrator and applications architect. And of course, Ustream, which you can see here, we have 250 people, 280 people in the room already watching the show. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, even when we do a show not on the standard day, we get hundreds of people tuning in. And Ustream, the quality has been going crazy. Uh, much higher quality now uh, than in the beginning days. And did you see that Tilla Tequila went crazy on Ustream this morning? I did not. So Tilla Tequila apparently got naked. You know she likes Twitter and Ustream. Yeah. And I think she likes to take a drink once in a while. So apparently... Uh, her last name is Tequila. Her name is Tequila. <laughs> so Tilla Tequila was naked on Ustream. There's no better advertisement for Ustream than right. naked celebrities. Right. Uh, and I, you know this was going to happen at some point. You, a celebrity without their people and a webcam, Twitter with hundreds of thousands of people on it equals embarrassment. Like just total madness. So she got naked, she was talking gibberish, she must have been loaded because she was saying all this crazy rambling stuff. She was probably on cough medicine or something. I don't know. The, her, her publicist will release it later. But anyway, that's a long-winded ad for Ustream, who's been a supporter from the beginning. Ustream, where celebrities get drunk and naked. Uh, I don't think they're going to appreciate that one as much. But anyway, if you go on Ustream, you never know. You might see Tila, Tila Tequila naked. If you, go, if you start searching for Tila Tequila, maybe you'll find her naked on um, Ustream, which is a great service. And of course, Audible, Audible. Um, man, we've got a lot of sponsors on this show. Audible. Uh, I'm going to give an ad for them later, but the, and you should really stay tuned in because later in the show, I'm going to tell you how you can get a free book from Audible. Free. And it, you don't have to put in your credit card or anything. You just get the free Audible, Audible audio book. I love Audible. That's what I listen to at least three days a week now. I'm on an Audible book. Fantastic. Uh, OK, so that's fantastic. Great job, sponsors. We have a couple of new sponsors in the new year, too. Yeah. It's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, very excited to have my next guest here, Kamran uh, Porzanjani. I think I got it right. Porzanjani. Perfect. Kamran, uh, though. It's Kamran Porzanjani. That's good. Thank you. Kamran. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is the co founder of Price Grabber, which is one of the largest startups here in Southern California, or was one of the largest startups here in Southern California. Definitely one of the largest exits. Bought by Experian, the same company that bought Matt Coffin's Lower My Bills company for, I think, what, three, four hundred million dollars? Uh, well, our exit was closer to about five hundred million. Five hundred million dollars. Yeah, wow! I actually wanted to make that clear because you know Matt and I got a little competition. A little competitive, yeah. right? <laughs> no, right. His kidding. was four hundred ninety-nine. Um, uh, yes, but uh, you know, but but both equally very successful companies. But it was about five hundred million enterprise value. And this took how many years to get to that level? I mean, you were doing this for a while. Right. So nineteen ninety-nine is when Price Cover was founded, and the company sold uh, end of two thousand five. So. So six years. About six years. Yeah. And. 
it was a compar it still is a comparison shopping. That's right. Uh, and this is, you started this in the early days of this concept of let's scrape or use APIs to consolidate all this data into one place and give users choice. It's a pretty revolutionary idea when it came out. It didn't, doesn't exist anywhere else in media, right? Like you can't get. No, but it's a behavior that everybody has, right? Everybody comparison shops. I right. always say it's not a new way right. of doing shopping, and people have been doing that with phone or just going from store to store. This just takes it, you right. know, and you know, uses the power of internet and makes it that much more effective and powerful. Right. Now, within seconds, you know, you know, you know prices across the uh, many, many retailers, sometimes right. 70, 80 on a popular product. So that's pretty powerful, and that's what it was really. And. What percentage of people do you think use a comparison shopping engine at this point? Because I, I use it all the time, my wife uses right. it all the time, but then I show it to people sometimes and they're like, oh wow, that's incredible. I'm like, how do you not know about this by now? <laughs> I know, I it, know. It's sort of shocking, like you, they, you actually went to Amazon, to this site, to this site, right. and to this site, and compared prices, you didn't just go to Price Grabber or you know, some of the other ones, uh, Frugal or whatever Google product searches. Right. I mean, it's kind of crazy. It is, but you know, uh, it actually tells you how much upside opportunity there are in many of these businesses, right? There's still a lot of people who don't know mm -hmm. about various uh, sites and the type of functions that are available to them. So I think that's actually what makes it exciting um, and really a lot of room for growth. So that's great. Yeah. Uh, and so now you're on, you have a new company. Tell us the new right. company. So the new company is bestcovery.com uh, and it's actually really a great site. Uh, it helps people to find the best of everything. And I basically call it a decluttering of the internet. I think there's a lot of great information on the internet, but now there's almost too much. There's some bad, there's some good, and you sort of, do you want to spend all that time to find uh, you know, the best TV or the best laptop or the best service to use? So the idea is, come to Best Covery. We have experts telling you what is the best of everything. We'll determine what's the best way to determine the best and just give, it, give all the answers to you in a short format and it's geared toward your application. Uh, so I'm loading it now, Best Covery, mm -hmm. B-E-S-T-C-O-V-E-R-Y for everybody. Now, is this right, Metacritic style or? No, no. So the baby, well, so the, yeah, that's a play, by the way, on Best and Discovery. Right, sure. So yeah, Best Covery. Best so, Covery. Yeah, so basically we go and identify, um, you know, experts uh, that, you know, have good knowledge, deep knowledge of an area or are really strong yeah. enthusiasts. And so we get them to... Uh, answer questions for people in a way and just say, hey, people are interested in this topic. What's the best laptop for traveling? What's the you know best digital so camera for underwater travel? And so they, they, they come up with the list. So you're actually hiring these people or are you summarizing other reviews no, out we there? Don't, we don't, uh, no, we're not summarizing other people's reviews. These are like f uh, fresh content. And uh, and so, yes, we work with experts to, to develop these. Got it. Because I'm looking at this one here, Best Budget Home Theater System by Rob Mead of robmead.com. So I right. guess this must be... Uh, he's he's got his own business or he's his own expert right. on something, so you're not even. It's not like you're hiring a thousand experts to work for you. You're finding them and That's consolidating right. them in one place. Right. There are a lot of knowledgeable people out there. Um, mm -hmm. You know whether they have websites and you see that's their business. Like the guy mm -hmm. who's like in this case, Rob. If he is in you know audio video, he's in the minutia of stuff all the time, and he can answer right. questions really diligently and and correctly. And if you really think about it, this again is, I don't think it's a revolutionary idea because if you think about it, this is how we shop. You know, when I want to buy a laptop, I usually go to my IT guy that knows everything and say, hey, I want sure. a laptop. And he says, Camera, you travel a lot, you want something lightweight, this, this. so here, yeah. these are the three uh, laptops you should be looking at. So, and this is really the same idea. It's just, again, making it better, faster, and really getting it all in one place. So simple. Very simple, yeah. Which is what Price Grabber was about as well. Exactly. So it's sort of a theme as an entrepreneur is what were you doing before Price Grabber? So I, it was another company that I was running. I was a CEO, and I helped. Uh, you know, it was a near, uh, near uh, startup company that I joined a few years back. It was in IT. Uh, uh -huh. Grew that to a, a leading company and sold that off before starting Price Grabber. So you're so, working for somebody else at that company? Yeah, I was. I was. I, you know, I did end up getting a part of the deal. But at, after five, six years, I looked at it and said, "What's wrong with this picture? I did all the work. <laughs> I, not me, but pe me and a whole bunch of other yeah. team." And so. Did I walk away with uh, enough of the action? And the answer was no. And so that would actually help, uh, you know, my future plan, which was, or with the next venture, which was uh, Price Grabber, helped me in structure that in a better way. I IT was like people were in the IT business in the '80s. That was sort of like the internet boom, right. In the '90s, right. Well, late '90s. So there, all of the '80s and the early '90s, if you were doing IT, Novell Networks, Banyan Vines, 
document management, all this stuff. Right. That was like the boom town. I mean, it was. I mean, it's great. This is one of the fantastic things, uh, you know, that you see every decade. There's something new that you something can see. Something new comes. Yeah, exactly. And it just, it's just it's great. And I think actually with the internet. It's it's so vast, so powerful that I right. think for many many a couple of decades at least we'll have enough yeah. to do here. So it's it's amazing. And as soon as soon as I saw the internet and I was a user, I'm an engineer by training. So this is really great. There's so many things you can do with this, and um, and I'm just you know I still love it. I still think it's one of the most amazing things, right? It Look is at the way it's changed amazing. everything for us, yeah. right? So yeah. and to think you know how we used to buy tickets for airlines, something as simple as that. Or, or comparison right. shopping, exactly. Or well, even uh, finding information. I mean, if you wanted to buy a stereo system, and compare, which one should I get? You'd be buying ten magazines. You'd be going to the library and looking for old magazines. That absolutely. Might, oh, we did it. We did a review of that in epi, you know issue from fe, you know February two thousand eight. We have to go find that back issue of the magazine, and what a disaster. Right, and, and it's actually great for the, you know also stopping BS. Right. I mean, you sure. can fact check anything sure. in a matter of seconds. You know, this is a true story. I won't go into the details of it, but just a couple of weeks ago, I had a bet, semi-bet thing going on. Is Tinkerbell two words or one? And everybody said that's one. It took 30 seconds to prove Tinker that. Tinkerbell. Bell. It's actually two words. <laughs> Tinkerbell is two words, yeah. So, okay. you know, it's something as trivial as that, but it was a lot of fun, and, I, and I'm pretty sure I got a dinner out of it, so it was good. You Internet liked, is good. <laughs> Internet is good for getting free dinners. Uh, so let's take a call. Are we ready for a call? Yes? Okay, there we go. Ah, here we go. So I hit this call here. Hello, is this Chris? This is Chris. Chris, how are you doing? How is his level? I'm uh, very good. Okay, Alex, level is good? Yeah. Okay, so uh, Chris, you're with uh, Comron and Jason. You have a question for us? I do. Go I ahead. Do. Thanks a lot for having me on. Of course, you've been listening to the show for a while? I've been listening not that long, actually. About uh, I think it's been about four episodes. Gary V was the first one I saw. Okay, so you've been around for a month. So. Good. You have work to do. You got a lot of episodes to go back. You got about 24 <laughs> episodes to listen to. Uh, I know. I, I've got them all downloaded, but uh, I have not listened to them all yet. They, they will. They will be on on the on the the next uh, few weeks. I'll have them all. So uh, how do you listen to them? You listen to them when you're like playing poker or going running or at your computer when you're working. How do you listen to the show? I uh, I do it all on my iPod when I'm in the car. Ah, uh, good. I, I'm in I'm in sales, so I'm in the car a lot, driving from customer to customer or mm. prospect to prospect, and uh, and basically my uh, my iPod is a uh, right. lifeline. You just take that iPod so Touch, you put it right on the dashboard, so you can watch the video clearly when you're driving around, and you just hold <laughs> the iPod with one hand and watch the video. That's that's how you know I watch what? the show. That's a good idea. <laughs> no, don't do that, please. Uh, so tell us your question. So my question is, I've got I've got my big idea, and uh, and I'm trying to, um, I'm in the very beginning stages of getting in touch with um, some VC um, firms or angel investors, and so I'm looking at the website, trying to figure out my best strategy to do this, and I would say most all the websites say. First step is email us your business plan. Um, that's the first step. And, and being that I'm a salesperson, I have a very hard time with just shooting off my business plan and hoping yep. to hear. I'm, my, my plan that I, I'm doing now, my question is if this is good or bad, is I've made a list of all the VC firms and angel investors in my area, and I have their phone numbers, and I'm researching contacts there, and I'm going for them like I'm selling them you know, a product. I'm I'm going to call them, uh, find out who's important there, and uh, get in touch with those people specifically. You know, try to take them to lunch, yeah. um, something like that. And okay. not, not following their process. Okay, so um, that is a bad idea, uh, <laughs> and it's almost as your idea is almost as bad as the idea they tell you to do on their website, which is send you the business plan. Uh, all the business plans <laughs> that get sent to these VC firms, I'm speaking in gener generalities here, get put into a folder. And probably don't get looked at because they get so many of them. Maybe they'll they'll browse through them, but you're correct in saying this doesn't seem like the right way to do it. Calling makes you seem like you're psychotic and like overzealous, and you're gonna make people really nervous because they're like, I want to go to lunch with you, and I'll buy you lunch, and they're like, I, I'm a venture capitalist, I really don't need you to buy me lunch, and they like to do like 20-minute things. So what is the other way to do it? 
um, and if you're not in the network. Well, what you have to do is you have to do your research, you have to do your due diligence on each of these investors. Who are the companies they've invested in? Who are the people who worked at those companies? Who are the people who are the, maybe the, you know, the managers at those companies? Maybe not necessarily the CEO. Uh, what are, who are the companies who are similar to yours? So if you're doing something in you know, content, um, like Cameron is doing, if you're doing something in um, search like I'm doing or knowledge exchange, what are the other companies that have done something similar five years ago, seven years ago, three years ago? Find those employees, go ask them for a cup of coffee, and then see if you can get them to introduce you to the VC. The, v the best way to get introduced to a VC is by a CEO who they've invested in already. Uh, uh -huh. So that's, that, that's right there the best one. The next best one is a lawyer, a, head a recruiter, an accountant, one of those service people. So if you get yourself hooked up with a good, v a good law firm, uh, they can do introductions if they believe in your product. That's not a bad idea either. And you don't necessarily have to pay the law firm to start working on your stuff. If you've got a track record, uh, if you have a great idea, some traction, they might actually um, uh, work with you on contingency, on raising money. But maybe, maybe not if you haven't done too much stuff yet. Uh, what do you think? You know, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, definitely put down the phone, Chris. You shouldn't be calling, cold calling people. I don't think that works. But you should have a short email that sort of describes the, uh, yes. the, the business, what it is, and you know, to the point. Um, you shouldn't really be super secretive. I know, like, you know, I've invested in a number of companies, and when people come to me and say, sign an NDA for me, that's a non starter. Right. Uh, first of all, I find that that's just not done. It's offensive, one. it's weird, it and, means you're clueless. Yeah, and it just, like, you know, opens you up. And, and what I always find is none of these ideas are. So brilliant. Yeah, they never are. I mean, the first thing you said with your new idea was, like, this is a very basic idea. Yeah. And, and, but your last idea, very basic idea. idea. It, right. It, I mean, was it some intellectual property comparing pricing? If people can, like you said, been comparing, comparing, comparing prices forever. Right. And so, really, and which is true. And all these businesses, yeah. you know, whether it's yours, I mean, you didn't invent search, but no. you said, well, here's another way to do it slightly better. Right. And so, you know, why don't we put, you know, human brain behind it? And sure. so that was the idea. So it's it's not, you know, evolution. It's evolutionary, not revolutionary. Right. And so. So usually you know, there's really no need for that, that paranoia. So I would say you have to open up, you have to be completely open, uh, you know, none of this dancing back and forth that, you know, I'm gonna keep it yeah. a secret. That doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, if you're asking for money, then it's your obligation to tell them like, here's how I would spend it, here's exactly what Right, work. and I think your, your, your ideas of how to network is great. The other one is something that I know you've done and a number of other people like, uh, like Jason Nazar does of Docstock. Yeah which is that he has these networking events and a lot of people show up there, either sure. speakers or whatever. That's also a good place to have a number of people have coordinated me and, and those yeah, <laughs> sure. things. And so that works also. I don't know what area you live in, Chris, but that could be another opportunity. Yeah, networking events are, are good. Where do you live? I live in Michigan, Boomtown. Yeah, you got to get out of Michigan. Yeah. It's not going to happen in Michigan. <laughs> That's for sure. You got you to move to the Valley if you want to make this happen in the Internet space or Boston, New York, L.A., Seattle, Austin, it's a, it's a short list of places you're gonna get some traction. Um, mm -hmm. Another great thing to do is to have a blog and a social media presence, a Twitter account, a Facebook account, that is centered around the vertical you're in. So if you're in wireless and you're doing iPhone applications, having a blog about your favorite iPhone applications and talking credibly about them, reviewing them, showing you're smart with it, sort of demonstrating you're not a crazy person, because if you have a nice looking blog, that's been around for a while, mm -hmm. and you comment on other people's right. like-minded blogs, the fear of you being a crazy person goes way down. Uh, and, and that's really what you're trying to do is like, when, you, when people are looking at investments, it's like, okay, there's a third of people who are crazy that I would actually never want to even talk to. There's a third of people who are losers in the middle who I'll talk to but I would never invest in. And then there's like the top third who are people who are smart and who have it going on and who are intelligent and considered and I would consider investing in them. And right now, when you start, you're in the bottom bucket. You're with the crazies. Get yourself into the loser bucket, and then get yourself into the winner <laughs> bucket. And you just, you know, depending on how you contact them and your social media presence, you know, the short email can include, here's my blog. Right. Boom. And if, I mean, you would look at somebody's blog, right? Yeah, I yeah. would. And you read it and say, hey, well, this person's got some interesting ideas. Right. And I don't know how much more you, time you want to spend on yeah. this question, but I think another thing, Chris, is if I were you, um, I would try to raise from, uh, money from friends and family. Mm. 
and just get enough of the concept going because sure. everybody these days wants to see it off the ground and you know it's very hard to get financing on just an idea, idea business yeah. plan, so yeah. people want to see it you know hey show me some traction show me the product a little bit so I would I would say that that's probably the best but I don't know that's if that's an opportunity for not or not or if it's a possibility but yeah. I think that's probably easier that you, you will spend a lot less time and effort on it yeah okay uh, thanks, thanks for calling thanks in, lot, guys. and uh, call us back in a month or two and tell us how it's going. All right, thank you. Cheers now. That's good. Yes. Helping some entrepreneurs. That's what we do here. Yeah, it's a good thing. Basic questions, good. but with the real answers. So if you have a question, if you have a question, you can email contact at thisweekinstartups.com, contact at thisweekinstartups.com, and uh, make sure you put in your Skype, your phone, your blog. Uh, you, you know, your Twitter account, then we can see if you're a crazy person. If you're a crazy person, we're probably going to put you on the air because those are the people who have the best questions. Um, yeah, we had the guy in from Koretsu Group, right? That was brilliant. That guy was pretty crazy. Um, so, oh yeah, we have some stuff going on with that we'll have to talk about later. Yeah. The Koretsu Forum. So you do angel investing. I do. I do. I've invested and, uh, about 12, 15 companies. 12 to 15 companies. Yeah. So you charge each company six thousand five, six thousand dollars $6,000 to pitch you. So that means you've, <laughs> you've made how much? Sixty to... Seventy-five thousand dollars on um, them, them pitching you. Uh, yeah, I wish that's how it worked, but yeah. unfortunately, it doesn't work. But quite it's not how that. That's not how that works. <laughs> that's how it works. You don't charge five thousand dollars to pitch you. Uh, no, no. Oh, okay. Not yet. What, would you, what do you think of that concept of angel investors charging to people to pitch them? Uh, you know, it's it's good, but I'm not sure if I'll be paying. Depends. Yeah. On, depends on how large you are, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, we're sort of making a joke. We've had an ongoing crusade against this on the show <laughs> with the Koretsu form and other people that charging six thousand dollars to go. Pitch to four events. I've never heard yeah. of it before, but yeah, it's kind of a it's this weird, like scammy underground thing. Yeah, uh, if, if you have to pay, it's not worth uh, listening yeah. to. I guess there's other things you pay for right. that you shouldn't pay for. Some people. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's take another call. That was good. You had good answers from him. I think it's good advice. Uh, do we have the next call? Yeah. Okay, let's uh, talk to Lee, uh, and this is an update. Lee, how are you doing? Good. Hi, Jason. Oh, so we have you on Skype. We can actually yes. see you pretty well. Uh, so Excellent. you called in. Remind us what you, uh, or remind the audience, what we talked about last time. Yeah, so basically I had the concept of giving people a different way to support their charities. So um, if you were a developer, basically the idea was that you could sell your skill to a company and the money that you would have earned, you would donate that money to a charity rather than just handing out raffle tickets and making probably a tenth of the price. Yeah. Okay, and you've got an update on this. How is it going? Yeah, uh, really well. So um, after I called in and spoke to you and Roloff, I went to a development conference the next weekend, and there was people who had seen the show in England. Oh, good. Who um, I briefly um, talked about my idea, and they kind of went, oh, your name's Lee. This is the idea. This sounds like Twist. Ah. So they, <laughs> so they <laughs> that's, that's good. We like so, that. Um, we like that. Yeah, so that was really good, and they, um, I was able to get quite a lot of feedback from developers and people who would be kind of putting their skill set on there. So it's really been a, a kind of mock research kind of period, um, and just trying to get the, trying to understand what people will want and how best to market it. Because I think that is the key in building up a network of people that when people go onto it, it looks legitimate. So um, yeah, I'm just kind of building away at the system, uh, slowly but shortly. I've um, got a small little team of people that I know, um, a couple of designers who are helping out and some guys in marketing. Um, and I'm using the principle of the site where I've said to them, um, I can't pay you, but what about if you do some designs, I'll donate some money of my money to your chosen charity. Hmm. Um, so that's kind of working great. Um, and Good. also I've just started to um, take a leaf from kind of, I've just finished reading Crush It. Oh yeah, Crush It, sure. Yeah, so, um, so what I'm... Yeah, so what I'm trying to do now is I'm basically, like you said to the previous caller, is build up a like a Twitter profile and a blog, which is about um, how te charities can utilize technology um, to become the kind of the main space for that. Great. So tell us what is the name of the business now? And just to, to recap for the audience, the original call, I remember clearly, uh, we had Roloff Botha from Sequoia Capital on the program, and you called in with the idea of... When people ask me, I want to volunteer, and they ask me to go work in a soup kitchen or something, handing out food, I I'm a developer. Handing out food is a $10 an hour job, and a developer is a $100 an hour job. Why don't you have me help you build your website? The reason is there's no central place to 
donate skills like that, and you're going to build the central Craigslist of donating skills, uh, for lack of a better word, or Munster Job Board. What, what do you think of the idea? I think it's a neat idea. I it's like a neat it. idea. It's a neat idea. It's, I so like everybody it. who hears it likes it. Uh, so now, Lee, the chat room and the audience wants to know, what is your Twitter handle, what's the name of the company, and what's the name of the blog? Do we have these things uh, locked down yet? Yeah, well, the, um, I've just got the domain. I've managed, I just got it from auction, so it's not set up yet. Okay. Um, but the Twitter account is set up so people can follow. I managed to get that up today. Pure Cause. Uh, say it one more time. Pure Cause. P-U-R-E-C-A-U-S-E. Pure Cause. Pure, P-U-R-E, yeah. Cause. I love yeah. the name. Yeah. It's a and, great and it, name. How yeah, did you come and up it with will, the name? Hopefully, it will be purecause.com, hopefully, uh, next week. W was there some uh, inspiration for the name? Um, it was the one that had the word cause in it that was in the GoDaddy $5 bin. I like it. I like it. That's honest. Uh, it's very memorable. And uh, I'm looking at your Twitter account. A uh, little tiny detail there. Your background file makes it a little hard to see that it's tagline, but it says, Where Tech Meets Charity. Great tagline, yeah. and uh, this is your idea has legs. Um, everybody who's watching the program or listening to it, go on to Twitter, and you're going to follow Pure Cause. And um, so, what what do you need next? You're building out the website. You have you got the domain name Pure Cause. You got the Twitter account. Uh, tell us how, how. What do you, you have any questions now, or need advice on any other piece, or are you just giving us an update? Um, an update, really. The one thing which I'm kind of battling with at the moment is. Um, is which direction to go with the kind of the website because um, part of me thinks, well, there's two ways. I was thinking I could build it very small um, and target, say, developers because that's my industry um, within England, mm. um, and kind of build up a base of maybe a couple of hundred people, um, see it working, get their feedback, and then go for something bigger, um, and kind of work on a principle of trust because, like when I spoke to you and Roloff, there was the whole idea of arbitration um, and kind of the kind of money side of it and transaction fees, which obviously to do something like that requires a bit more investment because you've got security and um, mm -hmm. multi-bank accounts and all that kind of thing. So the question really is, is it better to kind of go for it or kind of start off quite small um, and build up kind of like a little core user base, get, some, get something working, show yeah. it kind of going and then potentially kind of push forward with it? As far as I'm concerned, it's always good to start with a small, a vibrant community. Uh, I call this the slow uh, burn style of community building. Like, uh, you know, when you build a fire, you use little twigs, and then it gets hotter and hotter, you put bigger things on it. So if you look at yeah. Yelp, they famously started only in San Francisco. People got very frustrated. Why aren't you available in this city? Foursquare, only available in these cities. People complain now, why don't you have it available in these other cities? The reason it's not available in those other cities is they don't want everybody to have a bad experience. Right. They don't want yeah. trolls to take over and make it bad. So. I'm guessing, Cameron, when you did price grab, did you pick a specific vertical? We did. It was actually computers. And right. then eventually became electronics and all that. So we went right. to adjacent stuff. And you're absolutely right. That's actually what helped us be very successful compared to everybody else because everybody went broad really fast. Right. And that's a recipe for disaster. You Low just, quality. Yeah, low quality. You don't own up. anything. You're not. Exactly. Bad user experience. People remember the name. Oh, it's a bad user experience. Yeah, and I think you're right on. It's, it's the best way. Just start yeah. simple, prove the concept, and keep yeah. adding to it. Uh, yeah. Just do the basic essentials is what I would suggest. Yeah, I think it's good advice. And <laughs> I would just start with, if you have developers, just be like coders, you know, from England helping charities uh, in England, you know, and, and start there because you know all those people. And then you can say, you know, starting in, you know, 20, uh, in June of 2010, we're going to expand, you know, to outside of this area. Put your email in here to be alerted when we open in your city, you know. Uh, sure. And you just put up a, you can just put up a simple Google Doc, Google spreadsheet like Tyler does for me when I need to collect people's names, or Alex does for me. You, just, you can collect them in an Excel spreadsheet. You don't have to build some fancy software to do it. You know, spend your time figuring out who are the best programmers to do what for you know, which charities and, and get some success stories going. And I think one of the things I would focus on is what motivates people. And so you need to do a little yeah. research into the psychology. Uh, Maslow, 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 uh, Maslow, Maslow. Uh, it's been a long time since I was in college. Uh, hierarchy of needs. Uh, people are very driven by recognition. 
Uh, mm. They're driven by affiliation, uh, and they're driven by having fun. So if you can make this fun for people, and you can give them recognition, so on the site you have a list of like, you know, Jason is a hero for giving six hours to the Red Cross, and Tyler is a hero for giving eight hours to, you know, this African charity for global poverty or something, and they can put that badge on their site. Uh, Costcast is doing a lot of this kind of badges for your site. Causes on Facebook is doing a lot of this. That's why people post them there. So really think about what will motivate people to join, what will motivate people to do the four hours of work for somebody, motivate them to take your badge and put it on their site. Keep it simple. Any other Excellent. advice? Yeah, I think you, you, you hit it right on. It's great. great I, yeah, advice. this is your thing's going to work. Uh, we can't wait yeah. to uh, hear about where it, where you have. I mean, you're going to. I think by the beginning of next year, you're going to have a website up, and you're going to have a couple of hundred people actually doing things. I, I, I think you're going to. It's, it's really just a really great idea. And I see you went from five followers to 22 followers already. And when the show gets published, I'm sure you'll get a lot more. So a lot of us are going to watch and root for you from the sidelines. Good luck with it. Excellent. Thanks for the advice. Okay. Good luck. Good luck. It's good. It so is he, great. It's a good idea. Yeah, it's a good idea, isn't it? Yeah. I would have loved to ask him, you know, what's going to be the ownership structure? Is that going to go to charity as well, or is it going to well, be that? Um, be an interesting I, yeah, question. Well, did he mention on the first show if it was for charity or it was going to be a business? Um, I think it might be one of these businesses that aims to um, do well by doing good kind yeah. of a thing like yeah there'll be a, it'd be for profit but maybe not like the biggest profit in the world right but more I, like a lifestyle I, I, business. I, I still think it's just as a, you know we all have a soft spot for uh, you know helping yeah. others and it's just good that's good it's a great idea I mean I, I had the same experience where I'd, people ask me to go like do some charity work or clean a highway right. it's like really <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do clean I mean I'm, I'm happy to do it if I see garbage on the ground I'll pick it up right. but I mean isn't our job as entrepreneurs to create jobs? I mean, I think that's right. the biggest charity in the world is creating jobs. Right. No, it's, it's a great idea. It really is. I mean, the more I think about it, you're just really leveraging what you're giving, right? One hour of your time is worth a lot more than, Absolutely. you know, $8. <laughs> uh, that's why I'm on the board of a school in Brooklyn, Bay Ridge Prep, and I give them my knowledge, you know, whatever exactly. I can think of. Uh, okay, so this segment is uh, Shark Tank. You ever see, hear the TV show Shark Tank? Yes. So, uh, not a great show, but they called me and they said, hey, Jason, we want you to be on the show. So then they called me back, said, hey, Jason, we still want you to be on the show. Can you talk to us? I said, okay, yeah, I'll talk to you. And so Tyler set something up with him. And you know what happened? What happened? I'm not on the show. <laughs> uh, they never called back after that. They used the same people from Dragon's Den. So anyway, um, it's not a great show anyway because it's unrealistic. Like, you've invested in 12 to 15 companies. Right. You don't try to humiliate the entrepreneurs yeah. you're investing in? No, not, not at you all. You don't try to make them feel bad about themselves? I try not to. Yeah. I mean, you try to build them up, right, so they can do a good job. Right. And you know, nobody, by the way, should feel bad. You know, you don't get this stuff right all the time. I mean, right. I've, you know, I've done a number of these things that they didn't go anywhere. It just takes, you know, falling down, getting up, dusting yourself. Resiliency. Yeah, that's what it takes, right. really. Not as an entertaining right. for television, perhaps. Yeah. But I'm glad that TV wasn't around so they could record all of my, uh, you yeah. know, little mistakes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, if they, yeah, if they had a re reality series of most startup companies, it would be pretty compelling, actually. Yeah. Did you have an insight, Tyler? I, did, I keep thinking about that last caller. Okay, go ahead. Insight from Tyler. <laughs> Some, I haven't even done, given the insight yet, but that's okay. Yeah, Tyler, he, they're giving me sometimes the gives an insight. Now. That's his jingle. He's that's got his own good. jingle. But um, I keep thinking about the last caller in the context that there's a lot of developers that need to prove themselves still. You know, like, like we get people all the time, like, can I help you build your website? I want to do this for you. And, and they want to use it for their resume or for their right. mm -hmm. their demo reel. Exactly. Social media gurus, of which there are now, you know, thousands, right. need to prove themselves. Mm. So this platform that he's developing could be a wonderful way for people to prove their social media guru ninjiness. Yes. You know, and sign. I, Why I leave it to programming? It could be also be for designers. It could be for... Right. Yeah, the designers, social media, PR these, people, yeah, yeah. writers, yeah. copywriters, uh, okay. engineers. They yeah, put engineers, a team together. Yeah. They go to Africa. They build a school, yeah. or they, yeah. uh, you know, you know, create a well, yeah. or I, they give well, whatever have you. Just great. Yeah, well, can, I mean, he had the right idea of starting with the developers. I'm just so trying to think next. What's them. next? The social media guys, or the designers, or the engineers, or. I, I think it's going to get funding after all this. We're, we're gaga over it, so yeah. you, know, you know that there will be a lot of people on him, so that's uh, good. It could be a for-profit business, because he, yeah. he could easily um, charge people, if you're a nonprofit, he could charge you, I don't know, $200 for every sec successful connection. 
Right. Or you could just be $2,000 a year to be a member, and when you're a member, your stuff gets featured on the homepage with a logo. And it's free for anybody else who's not on the homepage. Right. There, there, there are ways to make money, yeah? Yeah, pre premium, free, free to premium. Uh, okay, so let's, uh, let's do our Shark Tank caller. This is the start of the show. That's what I want. We took their intro. That's what I want. That's what I want. That's Okay, here we go. Okay, so we have another call. You're calling from the 716, Kevin? Is that correct? Yep, that's correct. Where is the 716? 716 is right outside of Buffalo, New York. Outside of Buffalo, New York? Yep. How many feet of snow are there? Is there currently in Buffalo? Or <laughs> You know, actually, it's, it's quite balmy here. We've, got, we've had a sort of a weird fall. It was really cold, and now it's actually uh, quite nice. Okay. So, uh, Kevin, you know the rules. Uh, you got a minute to pitch. You want to get right into it. Uh, okay. And uh, this is a pretty good chance for you because you've invested in what? 12, 15 companies? Right. And uh, why do you angel invest? I've got to ask that question. Um, you know, for a couple of reasons. A, one is the proverbial passing the torch on. Right. So, you know, somebody invested in, in uh, price driver or my success in the past. So that's one. But also, you look at it and say, hey, I made zillions of dollars for other people I wonder if they can do it for me and right. of course it turns out <laughs> it's not so easy but so there is a yeah. little bit of greed and a little bit of you know, virtuousness virtuous yeah so it's Very a combination good. of both well uh, well said uh, so you've got two angel investors right here uh, let's hear your pitch okay. let's hear your pitch okay so the idea I'm going to pitch to you today is called PIK P-I-K-K -K. and you can take a look at it at PIK.com and so PIK is a social news site and Instead of just so it lets users submit news stories, and instead of just asking them to vote those stories up or down, it lets you ask the readers an opinion about the story. So, in addition to submitting a link and a little write up about the story, um, you also submit two choices that the voters can that the readers can uh, vote from. So, for example, you might submit a story on a startup and ask "Thrive or Fail," or you might submit the latest XKCD cartoon and ask "Funny or Lame." And so uh, every vote counts to pushing the story up to the front page. Um, you can also bury, uh, that kind of thing. And every story is tagged, so you can follow stories of interest. The other half of PIC is you can, if you're a blogger, you can use PIC to embed a poll on your web page. So if you want to engage your readers, if you're writing about something and you want to ask their opinion, you can ask a simple two-question poll, and those votes get registered back on PIC.com. And the more votes your readers uh, get, uh, vote on that pushes it up to the front page and then uh, because it's on the front page you get traffic back to your blog so those are the two basic elements of PIC okay. and then there's some social elements as well so uh, you can make friends on PIC you can nudge each other to vote on your story you can send private messages back and forth you can watch stories if there's a story that's on the front page and you want to see how it winds up a couple days from now that's long gone you can watch it and then you can watch users. So, Jason, if you were going to submit a story and, and, I, and I watch you, every, every story you submit shows up in the section called My Pick. And so it's basically a, a social voting site, but instead of just promoting up and down, it asks for readers' opinions. So that's Pick in a nutshell. Great. Okay. Um, so right off the bat, your pitch was solid. You were very clear about what it was. I understood what you were saying. You... Um, didn't use too many buzzwords. You said a social news site, which is like Dig. Uh, and I think you may have even mentioned right. Dig in there. And you said right. each story has a survey added to it uh, or two right. where you can uh, not just vote for it, but you could say, do you approve of something or do you object to something? So for here on the screen, exactly. I have a 15-year-old will be tried as an adult for killing a 9-year-old, approve or object. And so what I immediately thought of is this is like a, a Dig, but better. Uh, which is always good when you, you have a feature that's clever. So you have a clever feature. I think adding a survey to each story is better than voting. Uh, and it reminded me of SurveyMonkey was the other thing that came to mind, which, by the way, is one of the top 100 sites in the United States, has probably 15 million unique visitors. And Dave Goldberg, who formerly was of Launch, which he sold to Yahoo, is now CEO of it. Yeah. And that company makes money from charging for surveys. Uh, they have yeah. like premium products, so you're aware of SurveyMonkey. Um, yes. So I, I, I looked at, 
the fact that it was a clear presentation, you got me engaged, so I, I give you points for that. I'd say it's a, you know, your presentation's like a seven or an eight. It wasn't anything in there that was mind blowing. You didn't blow my mind, but you also didn't blow okay. it. So that's good. Um, okay. Uh, so that, it's, that's good. I mean, uh, the idea itself and the execution, which I'm looking at right now, is good. You've got something started. Uh, I'm right. not in love with it, but I don't hate it. So, as uh, Cameron was saying before, like you have to get it off the ground and start going. This shows me that you did something. Right. Uh, so, Cameron, what did you think of his pitch? How he did in that 60 seconds? And what do you think of the idea? Right. So the pitch was great, to your point. I understood everything. Believe it or not, there are a lot of people who pitch things and just like, you know, and they use a lot of buzzwords or let, and it's like, I don't, and they think I know all that stuff. And like, it didn't make any sense to me. You have to go over it all over again. Not the case here. Pitch was good. But it's like you said, this is a feature. And I look at it and say, there is a 8,000 pound gorilla here called Dig that has all this stuff. How right. difficult is it for them to add one more feature to it. If it gets traction, they're going to say, this is great. Let, it, let us do this as well. Yeah. Your chance is to get enough traction that by then you're big, there's a buzz around you, and then therefore you already off, are off the ground and can give them competition. But it's tough when there's somebody that big, it becomes yeah. quite tough to knock them down. Having said that, you have the site up. How, are, how long have you had it up? What's the result? Are, are you getting any traction? Um, this, you know, I've been working up on the site for, a, for you know, a better part of six months. Um, I haven't gotten much traction, but I've had sort of a hard time getting people to notice it because, uh, you know, you're in, the sea, you're in the sea of all these other startups, and then, you know, uh, people are quick to dismiss, oh, another social news site until, you know, you don't really get a chance to explain the whole thing. I've gotten some traction. You can see, you know, there's a couple of stories there that, you know, are over 100 votes. Most of the stories are, you know, 5 or 10 or 15 votes is what they wind up with. But, you know, uh, it, I did exactly those. Your words, uh, Cameron, resonated with me. I, that's exactly what I did. I wanted to get something started and get it off the ground to sort of uh, see if I got some traction before I went and took it to the next stage. So I've gotten some good traction, but not great. Are you a developer? I am. Okay, so you're a developer, and so you built it all yourself? Yep. And uh, what did your parents do for a living? Uh, my dad uh, is, was an emergency room doctor, actually. Cool. And mom, did she and work? My mom, did, my, she she worked in his office uh, oh. a, a little bit, but, but she never, she never she sort of gave up. She was a teacher, but she gave up her career. I have, I have seven brothers and sisters, so she oh, spent wow. her. Uh, her and uh, what uh, what did you do before this? How old are you? I, I just turned forty a couple weeks ago, actually, and cool. uh, I've been doing software development for my entire career. Yeah. So I just ask you those things because I've heard VCs say they like a certain type of person to invest in. Right. And I, I just wanted yeah. to get an idea of where you were coming from. Um, having uh, blue-collar parents, immigrants, uh, I've heard VC say that's what they look for. Uh, so I was just curious, because I also saw that you put your site on Hacker News, which is news.ycombinator.com, yeah. uh, yeah. and you're an older guy, but you know about Hacker yeah. News, right. which to yeah. me speaks volumes that you know, you know where the buzz is, Hacker News. And you know what Y Combinator is, uh, the incubator? Right. And you posted your thing in there and asked people to review your site. So you've sent right. me additional signals of quality. You called into the show. You had a good pitch. You executed well. You have a pretty groovy idea. You described your right. idea as pick is dig meets pole daddy, which, interestingly enough, is exactly how mm -hmm. I described right. it, except I use SurveyMonkey, which is the same thing, <laughs> Coke and Pepsi. So yeah. we're, we're, you, you, that shows what a good job you, job you did pitching. So uh, at this point, well, and, and you're a developer for a long time, which I like too. So it's not like you have to just get, you're just like a guy with an idea. Because guy with an idea means nothing. Right. If they, unless they have a lot of money or connections or do, you know, domain expertise. So I guess the, the, the logical next step here is, what is the business here? Is the business that you're going to build software and provide it to the Huffington Post maybe? And sell it? Uh, is the idea well, here, you know, you're going to build a destination site, which means you're going to need to be able to generate a lot of buzz and have a better name and a better design. Are you going to pick a vertical? You're going to have to have 10 verticals. What, what's your business idea? Are you up to that yet? Well, I have, you know, my, I'm focusing on getting users right now, obviously, but there's a, there's a couple of business ideas. One, one is to generate revenue with some premium, uh, some premium services so you can place your poll higher, for example, if you want to get a lot of traffic. Um, the other opportunity is there's so much nice data here you know, we know so much uh, about every person, about what they like, what they think is funny, what they think is stupid, what they think will do well. And I think there's an opportunity for um, 
advertising, specifically CPA revenue. I also think there's an opportunity for uh, inline advertising. So Dig and Reddit and StumbleUpon are doing this, and I think it's much more interesting for Coca-Cola, for example, to ask, what do you prefer, Coke or Cherry Coke, than just having someone have an ad that vote, you know, what does it mean to vote for an ad? It doesn't really mean anything. But I think there's some opportunities to get some sponsorship and, and, and basically engage with the audience. Hmm, interesting. Um, so the reason I, people will ask you that business question is not because yeah. they necessarily care, but they want to hear how yeah. you're thinking. Right. Like, I really don't yeah. care as far as I can as an investor. I mean, I care in a certain yeah. way, but um, if I'm investing in you, I assume you're a smart guy who's going to follow his nose and figure out if selling it to somebody or building a destination site is better, you know, which is the better business. But I'd like to hear your thoughts yeah. on that. So that was a good answer. Any other questions or thoughts on it? No, I, I think the only thing is uh, maybe another opportunity is uh, contacting some of the publishers and see if you can integrate your technology or be a technology provider to them while you're building your own destination. I'm not saying become an infrastructure provider because I don't know if that's a very successful business in the long run, but I think it could be another way to just get some more legs out there. You know, stick with it. Uh, I think just try to improve it. Uh, one feature difference is just not going to, it's not going to do it. Uh, you really have to think a little broader than that. But uh, it is great that you have the site up. It looks good. Uh, it looks uh, professional, uh, you know, for a startup. And I think you have a good start. So keep at it. Yeah, you have a pretty good start. Great. I think um, everybody should follow you on Twitter, obviously, P-I-K-K. -K. You have yep. that up and running. And you have a four-letter domain name. These are, again, signals yep. of quality for me. You have a decent domain name, Great. decent web design. I'm not crazy about your web design, to be totally honest. I think it's like a 7 or 8 out of 10. But listen, Mahalo was a 6 out of 10 at one point, and now it's a 10 out of 10. So you, it's, a, it's, a, it's progress, you know, and I, I can appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, smart enough to pick a four-letter domain, great. How did you get the domain? Was that available? You bought it. I bought it. Yeah. How much did that cost you? Uh, I've been told I got the bargain of the century. This cost me about $2,500. That's a great deal. For yeah, a four-letter domain, that actually yeah. is pretty easy to remember and uh, whatnot. Uh, Matt Coffin said last week on the program uh, that distribution was one of the key things he's looking for. How are you going to get this product distributed? And yeah. uh, I think that's going to be one of your challenging questions. But we're going to be watching you closely. And uh, where are you based? Okay. Uh, Buffalo. Buffalo, right. Ouch. Yep. Um, you need to shuffle hey, you know, out of we there. We have a bad, bad <laughs> reputation. It's, it's actually a wonderful place here. You know, no, you know, no, I know. I've, I've been to Buffalo. <laughs> It's a wonderful place, I know, but for a technology company, it's kind of hard. I know. Uh, yeah. So, but, you know, listen, there's other, there's Flickr came out of Canada. I mean, if, yeah. if this thing is successful, at a certain point, you're going to have to move out of Buffalo. And to get investment, you're, the only way to get investment in Buffalo is to go to, like, one of the companies, Barrister Information Systems or something like that up there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, you know, there's a couple of technology companies up there, right? Corning, is Corning still up there in Buffalo? Corning is a couple hours away. No, yeah. they're, they're a couple hours away, but, yeah. but it's in the same area. Yeah, so if you can find some rich people who are in Corning and want to have an internet bug, maybe you can get them to invest. Uh, but other yeah. than that, you're going to be slim pickings, and you have to have somebody who is in glass investing in your internet company. Not a great combination. Well, there are some examples, <laughs> right. if you think about yeah. it. Will right. uh, Shorter of Afford It, um, yeah. you know, he had a couple of successful ones in Ohio, I think. Yeah, and, it can but happen. Then, but then he moved out of here eventually, yes. so I guess he decided not to fight uh, the rising That's tide. That's the thing, is when you're, you have to, you have to you're right. swimming against it's the tide. It's tough, it's tough, yeah. You're finding yeah. people, buzz, like you, your thing that you said was the toughest for you? Getting buzz, getting people to recognize yeah. it. Yep. I mean, yeah, it's, a, it's right, an uphill right. battle. Um, but uh, another idea I had, though, which I don't know if I should tell you now or off the air, because I think it's, I'm going to, you know, is it okay if I tell you off the air? Because I think it's a differentiator, and I don't want to say it on air. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So you know my cell phone, uh, or I tell Alex to get me on the phone, and well, I'll, I'll talk to you after the show. Okay, thanks. Now, it's a really good idea I have, but I don't, if I, you know what I'm saying, Tyler? If I say it on the show, somebody's going to steal it, and I want you to get it out first. Okay, we'll talk later. Thanks, Great thanks, job. It's good. It is good. It is good. I like that. Yeah. And I by love the way, people pitch. I had an idea for the previous caller, but uh, I didn't want to say it, so maybe I can give it to yeah, you guys. Yeah, we'll get the emails. On, so. and absolutely. <laughs> uh, well, actually, you know, I, I today um, emailed some people, and I said, I've got to get your email. Um, I'm going to start an angel group here in L.A. It's like just like a breakfast or a dinner or something like that where people can pitch either things that you've invested in or Matt could bring something he's invested in right. and we'll all see the pitch but you would come to that if I hosted a breakfast Absolutely. or a dinner okay good then we got one more uh, and we got a couple of other people so 
basically what's happened is these guys from the Koretsu Forum who were charging people, mm -hmm. um, I told them if they didn't stop charging that I would start a competing event. They haven't listened to me, so now I'm starting a competing event, so it's going to be called Open Angel Forum. So we're going to basically try to put them out of business and have an angel breakfast we don't charge. That's good. And don't charge the, the yeah, angels good. either. Yeah, that's just not good. <laughs> not good. And you know how we're I mean, gonna... it's a business. I guess it's a free country. Everybody can have a business yes. of it. But it's, just it's a... your right to have a competing event. Uh, event and, and you know uh, who's going to buy breakfast? I am? No, I am. Well, okay. I'll be happy to pitch in for that, too. Yeah. But see, th this is what I was trying to explain to those guys. Like a real angel investor doesn't need you to buy them, the startup to buy them breakfast, yeah. uh, let alone pay them. Well, they right. were trying to use the excuse that we, c we have to, we have a lot of cost to incur to get these angels here. Yeah, like, what's the cost? No, you don't. <laughs> I don't Not understand the cost. Angels, I mean, how many pitches do you get? I get, I get a lot, but... Yeah. Uh, you so know. you get a lot, and yeah. then you see some that you think are intriguing. Right. I get a lot. Matt gets a lot. Sky Dayton gets a lot. Right. If we all just pick the best one we got in the last three months, that's four. Right. The four come, we each give them advice, and maybe one of them is worth investing in. Yeah, absolutely. Or two. It's a very simple. They're just greedy. These guys are making millions of dollars running this scam. Whatever. Tell us what you really think, Jason. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help myself sometimes. No, it's good. You know, it's I just, good. You should say it the way it is. I, I, it's one of the sort of things. So uh, take me back to the start of the company. You, you were doing IT, and then you decided, I have to start my own company. Mm -hmm. This is 1997, 1998 time frame, I guess. Right. You're getting out of that other company. You made a little bit of money, but not enough. Right. It, so it's actually slightly different uh, this, the events. Uh, so I had just sold my, it was an information technology and systems company, as I mentioned. And, um, you know, I had just uh, sold it uh, to a company that eventually became part of um, uh, GE Transportation. So at that time, my CTO had left a few months before to start his own internet company, and he uh -huh. called me, and this is a guy by the name of Corey Ostman, which, by the way, we've been working together for several companies. He's also invo involved with bestcovery.com. And uh, he called me and said, hey, Cameron, what are you going to do next? Uh, and I said, well, you know, I'm running the company, I guess, for a while longer and see what comes up. And he says, well, you should really look at uh, the internet, and, um, you know, there are a lot of opportunities here. And that was really the start of it. And so just, you know, I said, yes, lots of money, lots of stuff. And, of course, it turned out to be 1999 toward the tail end of it, but it just uh, was just an amazing thing. You know, to make it uh, really short, uh, or give you a short story, it really very much reminded me of the Berlin Wall coming down. It's one of those events like, yeah. God, I wish I was there. It's one of those events that yeah. happened. And it's like, you know, the internet is sort of like that. It's something amazing is about to happen. Right. And you have to be there. And You so, have to get off the bench yeah, and do something. Exactly, exactly. And then it's here. I like what you said before where there's still so much to be done, yet people are still watching and not doing anything. Absolutely. I mean, as, as, for as much activity as, as there is, you, you have to say, like, Really, it took that long for somebody to make YouTube or, you know, to make it work or Twitter or it's like all these things that just boom so quickly and work. Uh, absolutely. I mean, just look at the biggest companies uh, right now in the, in the Internet, right? Um, Facebook. Uh, I mean, you name it, Wikipedia. These are all companies that were created in the past four or five years. So yeah. it really just tells you how much opportunity there is. Right. And yes, things are going to get better. Now you say, how long did it take for Facebook? I mean, if you think of the internet as a fairly young industry, yeah, look 15 at years. yeah, look at how old is the luggage business? Yeah, I remember 15 years ago, people there were no wheels on them, and people used to lug all those things around. So it's true. Just think about it. I mean, that's there's always <laughs> room for innovation, even it, in luggage. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a good point. You cannot buy luggage without wheels today. Exactly, and that's the way it should be, by the way. So. Yeah, people used to actually carry their suitcases. I know, I did. So it's uh, pretty crazy. <laughs> uh, and so you start this company, uh, you raise venture capital for it, or you use your own capital? No, it was actually, uh, so, you know, it was a, a number of us, and we were working for free, basically. So I quit my very high-paying job and uh, went and started this with a you know, few other people and, you know, just got the site going and got the business going and, um, uh, and focused on, you know, trying to make money. But we did need some money, and so we raised about a million and a half in two rounds. Um, and then hit profitability. Who were the VCs or? No, it's just friends and family primarily. So you raise a million and a half from friends and family. Right. And then sell the company for $500 million. That's the only funding? That was the only funding, yeah. Wow. A lot, lot of happy. That has to be yeah. a record for. I don't know if it's a sort record. of like money in and money out. 
Uh, it, a million and a half turns into a five hundred million dollar yeah, exit. The that ironic is part is the second part of it, which was a half a million. We didn't even need that, but we were low enough on funds and just sort of cost per profit. We so yeah. it was a cushion. But look, it's good. Those guys yeah. believed in it. They made mega bucks, as you can imagine. What, what was the thing. range of the valuation they invested in? Was it? I mean, as low as. Uh, was you it know, single digit millions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these people for one point five had thirty percent of the company or something to that effect. Well, it didn't have 30, no, it wasn't that much, right. but, uh, but it was a good chunk, 10, and, 20%. Uh, and the, the point is, is still, you know, I, I think in one instance, uh, you know, I looked at it, it was like $16,000 or something like that was turned into seven, eight million or some, wow. or some big number like that. And of course, part of the fun was calling people after six, seven mm -hmm. years, and you know, that, what it, those, were, those were great conversations, some of them. Yeah, tell me about one of those, I mean. Well, you know, it was great because, you know, a lot of people put in a small amount of money, and it's like, who cares, they figured all the dot, Com and dot bus and they yeah. didn't even follow stuff and so we'll call and say hey you know call them from remember us the right yeah remember us and you and haven't say, spoken to them in seven years right, or five years like, exactly and just like hey uh, you know we sent once in a while updates to yeah. hear what we're doing and here yeah. and, and people knew us we had like you know we we had a good name so a lot of people knew that we were doing well but you know we would call people and say hey you invested hey 15 16 k you know what would make you happy and I said well if I made a hundred thousand that would be a really good day or two hundred thousand yeah. and so well we're about to why are you about six million or whatever dollars? And it's just like dead silence on the other side. So. <laughs> wow. The dot com dream actually came true with your yeah, company. It just, it's, it's just For all the stories here of <laughs> companies crashing and burning, you actually get to call investors. I think that's awesome, though. The, but it was fun. It was yeah. fun to do that. And it was also a way to thank them. You know, it's, it's, it's great. Well, that's what investing you know, is, right? It, I mean, it's you, great. You that's know. why people invest. Out of the 15 startups, you would hope that your all 15 of your angel investments would, you know, be 100x. Right. But it's not realistic. And if one turns out to be 10x, 20, if one turns out to be 30x, you will have doubled your money. So great. Right. You'd be totally stoked. Right. Uh, but what a great call to make. Gosh. It, it was. Awesome. It was a lot of fun. And, it, you know, um, it was almost worth it. Almost not quite. <laughs> yeah. I have to say, you know, it's interesting. People criticize entrepreneurs sometimes. It is one of the greatest rushes you can have as an entrepreneur is to have sold somebody on your idea. Like Pick is talking to us before or Pure Cause was talking to us. If in five years, Pick or Pure Cause becomes a, you know, ma make a company, and we were there at the beginning of it, even just to hear it, let alone put money in it, it's just so great as an entrepreneur to be able to, you know, right. send is. that email. I remember when I emailed Mark Cuban, AOL made an offer for this amount of money, what do you think we should do? And he owned like a decent percentage of Weblogs Inc. And he said, take the money. I said, yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> but he, you know, he, he, in one year, he wound up making 15 or so, to, what is, 10, 10, 20 times his money. And what, whatever, is great. I, the greatest feeling ever. And guess what? If you do that for an, for an investor, they'll yeah. call you back. Of course. The yeah. next time around, when you have something going on, yeah, they, they might call you, you back. Of course. Uh, uh, like which was interesting with, with Mark. He wound up investing right in Mahalo. Yeah, he just, yeah, sure, I'll invest in Mahalo, of course, you did good on the last one. Right, and that's, uh, you know, it, it's funny, sometimes uh, you look at some people and you think, uh, you know what, this business model is not all that, but I'm right. investing in this, I want to be involved in this next company. Mm. Um, and it's just because you want to build that relation, but you believe in the person and you right. want to have that You're relationship. You're betting on the horse. You know, the, the, the jockey, the, not the horse. It, it, it's a very important. Yeah. It's very important. Um, you know, the, the leader and the team is just yeah. one of the biggest decision factors, at least for me. I'm pretty sure for everybody in terms of so investing. Let's go through that. I mean, when, you, when you're going down your checklist, what are the... What are the two or three things that are most important on an investment? Right, and really, there isn't a checklist in that sense sure. because I'm not—I don't do it formulaic. I, I'm right. more like a hey, gut level thing. Sure. But team is definitely right up there. So team. Okay. the team and the leader. The, you know, there has to be there has to be someone that sort of leads it somewhere. That's very important. But it's also important to have a team behind them. No one person can yeah. accomplish everything. That's just impossible, right. right? We all know that. We've built companies yeah. and we know what it's all about. It is a collaborative effort. So if you have a strong team, that makes it that much better. But definitely a strong person uh, makes, a very, very, uh, makes it a lot more compelling to invest. The business model is important. Do I get it? Do I identify with it? Is this something I would use or can see other people using it? Is this really solving a problem? Is is this going against a uh, you know major players that are already established? So right. we so just talked about this, right? Market, so, yeah, right. Solution. I mean, right. We were talking about pick. Not a bad idea, but you have to have a lot more going than just one single thing different. Nobody's than, switching off dig for that right, feature, right? So and so that you know th that's the kind of stuff you look at among among a lot of other things. Uh, you know, for me. Revenue model is big. I'm all about you know how quickly do you get to profitability, 
Um, and you were very focused on that price grab, right? I was. And you guys so that's pioneered I, in cost per click, I think, right? I mean, what uh, was it acquisition? What was the what was the main model? Uh, no, it was CPC. It was um, CPC. Yeah, but to say we, you know, we were one of the early pioneers. I wouldn't yeah. say we were the first ones. No. Um, this is really around. If you think about it. Uh, you know, Overture uh, was sure. around, which uh, you know everybody now gives a lot of credit to Google for a great product. But right. you know, yeah, search they bought, they and CPC from, model yeah. came from Overture and, and Applied Semantics, was right. The company they bought, right? Yeah, exactly. in LA. So, um, so the model existed, but we were among the early people who said, "Hey, this is a good way to build a business." We insisted versus on display it. advertising. Yeah, display advertising even wasn't on uh, Price Cover for a number right. of years. Just by the way, it isn't on Best Cover either. So, like people say, "Oh, here's a way to make you know." Several thousand dollars more, yes, but it's not the best compelling uh, experience for, for you people. You like the cost per click? I like the cost per click. I, what I like is for user to have what they need. Now, eventually, I, I added up, I added the uh, uh, visual displays to price cover. Maybe someday I'll do it with best cover. I'm not clear on it because it's right. a slightly different business, yeah. right? We say, trust us, we'll tell you what is the best, right. but in the meantime, we're going to advertise. It just doesn't yeah. work that it's way. It's incongruous. Right, to so I don't, I'm not sure if I want to go down pa that down that path, certainly I'm not thinking about it today. Right. But um, but the point is, yes, cost per click is a lot cleaner, It's the value proposition is a lot cleaner uh, and more understood, and especially you have to look at your business and see what works. The cost per click will not work uh, in some other models, uh, and, and display will, and there's nothing wrong with that. Brand advertising sure. is great, and I'm a big believer of it. Advertise price cover, so I must believe in brand. Right, uh, when you have a great product, advertising is a great way to sort of fuel it a little bit, like absolutely. Apple does, but it's not going to turn a pig into a. Absolutely, you know, in the long run, people will know yeah, if your product is a trick or not. They'll know if it's bad or not. So when you went into vendors and said, "Hey, Dell or JNR, Computer World, we want you to pay twenty-five cents a click, fifty cents a click." I mean, what was the reaction? Well, in the early days, it was actually quite crazy because we were in the heyday of uh, yeah. you know eyeballs and hey, we'll give you traffic. And it's like, nah, that's not what we we're about. We want to send you really qualified buyers, and and they will give you revenue, and yeah. you know we want to charge you. And back then, it was like ten cents, right? right. We we're fighting for ten cents. And everybody thought that we were crazy. But actually, what was great was they had so much money, they didn't care. So whatever. I, okay, send us okay, eyeballs. Send here's us 100,000 yeah. people. Yeah, and, and so here's. And we said, well, we won't send you 100,000. We don't have that many users. But what we do send them, they buy. And guess what? By literally a few months later, the whole paradigm changed. Mm. And then everybody was, hey, where do we go get revenues? Uh, and, uh, and guess you're what? You're talking about when the market collapsed. Exactly, which was a, a, April of 2000. Yeah, so you, much. when you started, you weren't in the exact kill zone because display advertising sponsorship was, but you lasted long enough to actually. actually yeah, and actually the downturn of the market helped helped us. Uh, look, in a bad economy like this, by the way, it's one of the reasons I started Best Cover. It's a great time to be starting companies. It's sure. a great time because during boom times, you can't even get, you know, good talent. You can't get yeah. attention of people. It's a great it's a time to be noise, studying. So, right? yeah, for the listeners, I, th I think uh, it's, it's important to know that you shouldn't be dissuaded from starting business. It's actually right. a great time to be studying businesses. And you're saying and because be the cost structure is low, and there's not a lot of noise competing with your products. Exactly. And um, and and even if you think about it, companies will now take your call. All of the times they're so busy. That's that true. You have a you know I have a business uh, proposition uh, for you, and they want to listen because they they need the money. It's they, interesting, yeah. And it's, uh, even with the big companies like the Googles and the Yahoos and the Microsofts of the world. They don't have as much noise around them. They're looking. They're, even those big companies are looking to make some kind of move to move the needle for them. Right. So it, it, it's. Uh, I agree. I love building in the down market. It is. And it is the best time. If you have no job, what else are you going to do? <laughs> no you know, kidding. like I mean, <laughs> the unemployment is, is pretty serious. Yeah. Um, what's, your, what's your outlook for the economy? I mean, you're an entrepreneur, so you know it's you a tough one. It, it's a tough one. Um, I think, and I really that's not my specialty, but I can share you. With you, my my thoughts. I think we are we're in for a tough time. Um, I don't think this is going to be um, a period that a lot of jobs are going to come back really fast. Yeah. It's just I don't see it. A lot of people are outsourcing all kinds of things overseas. Interesting. So it's kind of tough. But I think you know the market will recover because uh, to some extent because there's now business is so international. But I think we're in for some tough times. But you know, let's face it. Uh, you know, we we've done some. Uh, not so perfect things in the past few years, run up debt yeah. and all that. So we have to pay for it. You have to pay sooner or later. Exactly, exactly. And the companies outsourcing, learning to do more with less, learning to be more efficient. Maybe there's an argument you don't bring back those positions because you've said, "Gosh, you know, we outsource this. It's better to outsource it. The company's smaller. It's more efficient." 
I mean, is it, is it a permanent reset of jobs? Is it a per, like you know some of these jobs that are cut? Are they coming back, or you think it's going to be? I don't. I don't think so. Yeah. Just, because once you get it working, once you go through the pain of let's say outsourcing your HR or accounting overseas and it's yeah. working. Then you start to think, well, do I really need to bring it all back, or yeah. do I add more people here as opposed to there? Yeah. And, and so it's actually it's not a great cycle. It's good for businesses. I get more the cost, and, and actually they need it because if they don't, a lot of them will go out of business in this right. period. So it's it's a needed, uh, it's a necessity, but it's unfortunately not a good trend for the long yeah. run. And and a lot of people talk about re-education and all that, but these are good professional jobs that are leaving the country, and it's, that's kind of tough. It's, uh, but I hope I'm wrong. I, I'm not, a, I'm I not would, an economist. So. I, I, I hope you're wrong, too, but I happen to agree with you wholeheartedly. So the company is now, in 2001, 2002, it's growing well because people need performance-based. Uh, right. And you just grow right through there? And, and what's the ramp of the company? How many people are in the company in 2001, um, 2002? We were always a, you know, small, probably by then about 20 people. Oh. Um, so even when we sold, we were about 150 people. We were very much into automation um, and just doing things perfectly, keeping the team small and making them very focused. So it was it was a very tight-knit group. And, you know, we were, and we had a lot of users that were organic, and that was one of the things that differentiated us. So our brand was well-known. Yeah. Uh, which meant that uh, you know we, we had much better margins than, than our competitors in 45 percent right. profit margins is wow. somewhat obscene <laughs> yeah but but good uh, and really what powered us what made us successful was just people believing that we are you know we were doing the right thing Alex just uh, you know when we just came, when I came in I was just talking to him it's like hey Cameron I'm an early user of price cover way back in the day and really that's the power of price cover that we had so many people believed in our yeah. product you know, and again, something that's tough to replicate and something that I really want to do with Best Discovery and yep. something that I encourage everybody to do, right? And I know that this is what all about. Trying to make a people trust. Exactly. It it's very value. important. There is, you know, the bad news on the Internet is there's a lot of garbage, there's a lot of misinformation, yep. there's a lot of uh, shady stuff. Right. You know, how do you stay away from it? And, and we stayed away from any kind of gimmick you can think about, pay for mm. placement, this and that, you know, up front with the users when we advertise things. It really made a difference. It really yeah. made. And by the way, display advertising, like I said, for many years we didn't have it. At no time did we have pop-up advertising. Remember yeah. when that was all the rage? Oh, of course. We, we Matt would... Coffin loved it. <laughs> <laughs> that was his, that was his, he just last week explained how he built the company off of it. <laughs> oh, it's great. We should cut those two clips. But yeah, a little dig to Matt Coffin there. But he, you know, he even no, he admits I, yeah, it. Yeah, like, yeah. He's like, it's, it was my, it was 80% of his business, he said at one point. But, Right. I agree. Annoying, bad customer experience. Right. And that worked for him and for yeah. other sites. All I'm saying is for yeah. price grabber and what we were trying to, we right. were trying to get the organic user, a lot of direct right. traffic. And so for that, it pop up just wouldn't yeah. go. And believe me, we would turn down advertising forty, fifty thousand dollars a month back in the day when forty five. When you could have used it. Yeah, forty, fifty thousand yeah. dollars was a lot of money yeah. to the company. But eventually it paid off, so it worked out well. And so when you're at that point and people are interested in buying it, um, five, six years in, it was a hard decision to sell it. I mean, you got an extraordinary uh, deal, so I'm guessing you obviously took it. So, But did you struggle over that? Did the team struggle over it? Did you um, feel like there was more left for you to do? Th or? There's always more to do. I mean, even after we sold, we'd continue to grow the company yeah. quite, quite uh, well uh, into the following year. But that was fine. Um, I think along the way we had we had in, you know interested buyers were highly profitable or you know everybody understood what we were doing. So there was a lot of interest, but we decided not to sell in most cases and it was a wise decision but there was you know there came a time there was a lot of interest in the space both of my competitors uh, were bought in that summer shopping.com uh, yep. Dan Seperon and then uh, Farhad Mohit's uh, Shopzilla and so both of them were sold. there was a lot of interest in the space and so everybody said like hey listen we're interested you want to buy you want to sell or not and so we engaged in the process and uh, you know found and talked to a number of companies that were interested and found one that we thought would be a good so match. When you say engage in a process for the entrepreneurs who don't know what that means, does that mean you hired a banker? Yeah, so you you hire a banker and uh, somebody you know, the like bankers. Allen and Company or right, uh, yeah. there was an Allen Company. It Goldman. was uh, yeah, so yeah, and what do they Morgan do? JP Morgan is who we use. So. JP Morgan and so. You, these bankers do what? They they make a well, book and give it to people and say, "Would you like to buy this?" And you got you it. I mean, them, you, right? you you know the process, but yeah. yeah. So I, I think just for yeah, I mean, it's just really really not that much different than selling real estate, I guess. Yeah. If you want one way to look at, but a lot more sophisticated. You know, my I mean, I already had. Let interest, me walk you through the house. Uh, yeah, but actually, yeah. it is something that's needed, believe it or not. I mean, I already had interested parties. I could have gone direct. 
but it's not the best thing to do when, it's, when you're talking about that large of a business because you really do need that go between and negotiation and the buffer. And, and I think it's, it's worth and they've, it. And they've validated it to a certain extent. I mean, if they're saying, we're going to put our name on selling this, that means there's a certain endorsement there. Like, we wouldn't represent something that is garbage. Right. There, there's, there's all kinds of, yeah, yeah, there's all kinds of, but actually they do bring a process to it and they say here yeah. it is and there is, so it is, you know, when I say they're being just a real estate agent, I'm being unfair to them, but it is the same role, if you will, of, of really going in between, um, you know, the buyer and seller and, and really, and really good ones add value to, to the process as well or, uh, yeah. you know, which is, which yeah, they, they might know. have somebody that you didn't think of. Right. Uh, they might socialize the idea with different people inside of a company that you already know, but maybe you don't know everybody in the right. company. So. Or structuring the deal, you know, and in other yeah. businesses that I've sold, I've seen it structure the deal in a different way and it mm -hmm. works out. So so it's it's good. I mean, it's a, it, it, my point is that, you know, if you have a large enough business, you should really engage yeah. a banker, probably in every case, just, of, you know, how big and how good of a banker What was is. the uh, biggest challenge through the whole journey from start to finish? What was the, what was the thing where you just thought, maybe this is insurmountable or... You know, was there ever that moment where like this thing could have come off the rails, running out of money, or <laughs> never? Yeah, I, I think actually, uh, believe it or not, early days not taking the money was difficult because here we were competing with companies that had raised 200 million in aggregate, you know, with all the companies that they bought, or you know, tens of millions, if you will, of of, and here you were starting with a million and a half, um, and um, you know, it's less, I used to say it's less than what they spend on the furniture. Right. And so it was like, hey, should we raise money? Are we doing this the right way and, and all that? And of course, you know, shortly thereafter, the option of raising money went away for right. at least a year. And, uh, and then ironically came back very strong because we were one of the few sure. successful ones. And, but still, we, we decided to, to say no to a lot of VCs, which was not easy. Some of them were difficult. I mean, in one particular case, I think one that I really thought about and I struggled with um, uh, was a well-known um, Blue you chip. Know, blue, yeah, as, as good as a guess. Kleiner, Sequoia, kind of benchmark uh, level. You know, yes, and without naming them, and, and it just was a difficult, and particularly the person that was involved, I just thought brought a lot of value, but it just uh, wasn't the, the, the like process. A, like a John Doerr or Michael Moritz type, without saying anything. Without saying I'm just yeah. giving a couple of names out there. It could be <laughs> any of them. Um, those are good a, names. Yeah, those are good. Right. Uh, those are the All best right. names, right? Yeah. I mean, start Bill Gurley, who knows? Benchmark. Um, so that was a difficult one. I so, mean, just like, when, you, when, so you know, do I want to not take one of the best teammates possible out there? Yeah, you know? no. So I take me through that process because it does sound a little bit crazy. Uh, do you have some sort of chip on your shoulder about venture capital or, or spending money? Are you ch so cheap that you don't want to take it or do you think it's a distraction? Or uh, does well, it you know, scare you that you're going to go crazy with it? No, I, I think so cheap maybe. Uh, so, th th you know, the money is not cheap. It's expensive right. at the end of the right. day. You know that and sure. I know that. Um, but then, you know, also you think about it, and, you, and in most cases, and that's why I say I only really yeah. struggled with one, in most cases, I say, well, do I really want to, because, you know, a lot of VCs, uh, and I don't want to paint them on the same brush, but, you know, like, this is the hot thing today. This is the hot, you know, you're in front, are you B2B, B2C, especially back then, there was a lot of talk like that. Yeah. And we were a B2B, B2C infrastructure. Vertical, but we, we were all those yeah. things, really, yeah. if you think about it, because what we did, we had a site for consumers, right. but we, what we, referred people to other sites, so that's yes, B2B, yeah, so B2C, yeah, yeah. and then we had a phone system, and we we, power, we had a co-branding, so that was the infrastructure, if you will. So all those things were on the table, but, you know, everybody says, well, you know, again, I'm not saying we were chasing everything under the moon, right. what we were doing, it's like all these things are part of the core of what we do and fits nicely into it. Whereas I'm not sure if every VC would have seen it that way. Right. Um, I can, so it's the distraction. Right. I, and it's just like the, you know, I believe it or not. Meddling maybe. Some uh, right. And even early, early on, some people, it's like, oh, you guys don't get it. You're old. I mean, remember that when we were right. not. Uh, it is the, an old economy kind of position. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We, I mean, back in the day, especially with those eyeballs and so, oh, sure. you guys are old. But as soon as it turned, the same people would come and say, you oh, brilliant. you know what? No, not billions. It's, like, it's all about uh, revenue and Rev, profitability. Sure. Earnings. Okay, thanks. You right. know what happened in the past six so months? So basically, you, know? you kept your belief system right. straight through. I believe that we should run the business frugally. I believe we should focus on revs. I believe we should have a 45% margin, whatever the case right. was. And the market is going like this, and you're just going up your nice growth right. curve. And I didn't think the business needed the funding. I mean, so you cannot start a, a search company, I don't think, this, uh, the same no. way as an example. Right. It happens yeah. to you, by the way, your business. Yeah. You cannot because they're big yeah, or players. Or a chip company or a or car a chip company. Co exactly. You can't Some start Some things are capital way. expensive. Yeah, right. In, in this case, it just wasn't needed. It was just, we got to a point that yeah. it was self-sustaining and would go on. It's not for everything. And, and by the way, 
it, people should take venture capital for many reasons. Uh, sure. One is because we just said it, the business needs it. The other one is maybe you need the you know you need the brain trust. You need sure. the, the, the right partner to open the credibility, yeah. open sure. up doors. So you know people think I'm anti, anti VC. I am not. Uh, totally get what they do and yeah. it's essential and um, and uh, they should keep doing it. Yeah. And how else would Mahalo pay for the shot here? <laughs> <laughs> Well, my, I'll come down for VCs lunch watching. <laughs> How else can we have a private jet at our company? Um, I'm a, I'm a, I agree with you. My last company, I built off angel investment. The company before that, I built off my credit cards. This one, yeah, I, I got the opportunity to work with one of the top VC firms in the world, and it's capital intensive, and I like having a chef at the company. So what can I say? Uh, but so far, so good. Uh, so we do a little news segment here. And so you sit in for the news. He'll, uh, we'll have Lon come in and read the news. and. We've got 933 people watching. My God, that's incredible. And I didn't even have to get naked. No. Like going back no. to the. No, I mean, did, does that mean Tiller Tequila had 9 million people on today? Is, is, is this the end of broadcast television? I mean, we have, if we have 935 people, you realize that's twice as many people as watching MSNBC right now. Basically, I think <laughs> I'd quit my day job and work for Mahalo for free. Thank you, JP Knox. Uh, if you guys have a, a question, uh, you guys know you can. Uh, go on Twitter and put a hashtag there of P pound twist. And you can also thank the sponsors at WebSpy, at DNA Mail, at Ustream, and uh, at audible underscore com. While Lon comes in to read his news. Lon's news. There's Lon's graphic. Nice. Very serious newscaster. Is you can see. Very serious. Excellence in broadcasting. That's what we always go for. That's cool. And it's got that serious music where you can tell like Lon's going to do some serious. Um, I wrote that myself, interestingly enough. Little yeah, uh, everybody's commenting that there's a thousand people watching the show. I don't know why there's so many people watching the show. I might, maybe it's a different day. Maybe this is maybe a day Thursday that works is a better, better day. You know what I think it is? Is I have like maybe three or four thousand more people following me on Twitter now because ah, I, I started be doing that thing that I was telling you about that I'm doing now to get yes. followers, and so I think I have a whole bunch more followers. Um, Probably. If you follow people back. I'm adding like 100, 150. You just told everybody my strategy. Is that it? That was That's the strategy. That's Basically, no, I have a strategy. There's, there's more to your strategy. There's a little more to my there's strategy. More to I am strategy. Follow, I'll tell the strategy. On Twitter, I am following anybody who replies to me or retweets me right. or mentions Pound Twist. See, that I think is the new wrinkle. Yeah. Is searching for people who are writing about things that relate to right. you. Right. So if they're, they're watching, tw if, I, if they're watching Twist and then I follow them and then I tweet that we have a guest. Who stole this company for five hundred million dollars? Like, right. oh snap! We got to go watch that and learn from that guy. That's what's happening, basically. Probably. But I mean, yeah. what does this mean for, like, television and stuff like that? If like, you can just automatically get like this huge audience on the web. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, I think we're beating Fallon now. Jimmy Fallon. People. Yeah, I think, I think actually no. I think we're, <laughs> we're, we're 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 starting to bump up against yeah. that. Um, so, uh, what's in the news, Lon? Well, let's start with iMeme. Uh, MySpace will acquire streaming music service iMeme for the low, low price of $1 million, with alleged payouts of up to $9 million to top employees. Uh, the final overall price they're saying is probably around $8 million total for MySpace expenditure, most of which is going to go off to paying off debts. Hmm. Uh, the site had been funded to the tune of about $25 million by investors like Warner Music Group, Sequoia Capital. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so what happened here? Is this just another story about the perils of a digital music startup? Yeah, that's exactly what the story is. They, they, the music companies were not happy about the traffic they're getting, obviously, right. from what I understand. Uh, people are streaming music on it, and the big lawsuits come, and there's no big exit. So it's pretty interesting to contrast this to another Sequoia investment, which is YouTube. Yeah. Somehow yeah. YouTube yeah. sells for $1.6 billion, and I mean basically gets wiped out. Sort of a fire sale, yeah. Just uh, yeah, this seems like we're, you know, and there were rumors that they were on the brink of shutting down, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but this is why I never... another another round. Exactly. For a while. I, this is why I never get involved in the music business it's on tough. the web. Yeah. A anybody who's pitched me on that, unfortunately, I say, music, I don't know. I don't want to invest in this. No tough. way. It's tough. I mean, no, it's nobody, that's why there's so little innovation in music on the web. I mean, if, even if you look at Pandora, Last FM, some of these successful streaming companies, right, yeah. they are constantly as successful and loved as Pandora is. The CEO is constantly like, we may not be here tomorrow. You know, they're going to change yeah. our license. It may be over. Enjoy it while you can. You know, like, can you imagine running that business? I would want to kill myself. Yeah, you, I mean, up you, in the air. You're running a comparison shopping engine, you know, and somebody drops out, you know, like, okay, you got 20 other people selling that camera. It doesn't That's matter. Right. Right. You know, all of a sudden the camera people start suing you. Imagine if Canon and, you know, Dell starts suing Price Grabber. I mean, 
You know, uh, ironically, no, they didn't sue us. But I get that look on your face, no, like, oh, actually. But no, I mean, it. yeah, just quickly, just, yeah. you know, but it's like, hey, take our pictures down. And it's like, do you realize we're selling more of your products than any, I mean, we are the cause of selling more of your products than right. anybody else. Really? By the way, call your top distributors. They love us and they're throwing money and they want to get this stuff. Why would you want to do this? And oh, and, the, wow. and it was really funny. It was just like, because we don't sell on the internet and there, nobody's allowed to sell on the internet. Um, and, but people uh, are. And, and, and say, well, well, you know, these are your products. You have the manufacturing number, you have the production. Why don't you go find out who you sold it to? Then you know. But the interesting thing was it was all wink, wink, and you know. Right. It's fascinating. Yeah. Th that's a whole different level because the, there are instances like fair use, like people are taking, you go on Gawker or Huffington Post, they're using images and videos. Maybe they didn't clear or whatever, but they're sending traffic. So people are like, it's the sort of fair and fair use, I call it. Right. Are you being fair? Are you providing some value? Then maybe the person's going to let you slide. If you're just a total thief, right. not so much. And that's a difficult one about music. Yeah. But actually, they had a lot of traffic. I'm kind of surprised. I mean, had a lot. Yeah, a lot, a lot of, of traffic. traffic. Yeah, uh, they had a pretty high profile. And also, I think they were, let me type in um, a song, but uh, Tyler, you tell me, weren't they in the one box on Google now? Mm -mm. I thought that's they were. I like. Oh, that's, that's I like got yes. in there, not I meme. Right. Uh, um, but, I mean, they had significant traffic. Maybe 10 million people, 20 million people using I meme? I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, it was yeah. something along that. Um, it's sad. Uh, I think the music industry doesn't play nice with others, and that's why they're not doing well. If they only could play nice with others, they would be doing so much better now. And if you, you only have to look at the television business and Hulu to see what's right, possible. Right. I mean, they're getting, I was watching uh, V, you know the yeah. television show V, yeah, the yeah, remake the of the aliens, 80s show? Yeah. So uh, I watched it, we missed a second episode because we just taped the pilot, we didn't put the series recording on the TV, my wife and I. So I was like, let me see if it's on ABC.com. Sure enough, it is. Mm -hmm. We watch it. They have like a huge ad for uh, something. I can't remember. Honda something. Anyway, it uh, wasn't of interest to me. But a car, and it was a beautiful ad. Like, you know, and it, it happened five times. I mean, they're getting a higher CPM for that than they are for television. Nice. Doesn't that tell you something? If, yeah. if, if me watching it on a small screen gets them more money than me watching it on the big screen, there's something about this that's better than that. It's a, I mean, so immediate. There's a keyboard. Do they yes. Have it? Can I yeah. Find it? Can I swipe my credit card? I'm watching Boom. it right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's the music industry has that anytime they want it, and really this. What's yeah. the um? What's the what's the system everybody's using in Europe now for music? Spotify. Uh, Spotify. Everybody and people here in the U.S. have Spotify. From you what I understand, you have to get a code. But if you get the right code, you can get in. I think you have to if you so, if you so get or, if you use a different IP or something like that, you right. get on there. Yes. And that's like Rhapsody or whatever. You can but you can download the music. To your it's player. Pro account, you can download the music. Right. Pro you, account, the regular you download account, it. you can't, but it's it's like a jukebox. I mean, any song you want, there's going to have and it, you and can, it'll play. Well, like, like you Rhapsody. You can as many times as you want. Like Rhapsody, but you can, in this one, in Ra I have Rhapsody on my home mm -hmm. Sono system, which is incredible, um, but I can't download the songs to my iPod or whatever. On yeah. Spotify, you can actually download the songs yes. to phone. your phone, which is incredible. Why is that not here in the United States? I don't know why they can't get it. Because the they're right probably going to get sued. Yeah, it's something yeah, about the, 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 the ownership of the Copyright. songs, but it is Copyright. amazing. Yeah, uh, I just, somebody in the uh, chat room here, Monkey3. Uh, good to hear from you, Monkey3. Uh, tell Monkey2 and 1 we said hello. Uh, ranked number 196 on Quantcast. Wow. I mean, gone. Phew. Ouch. Yeah. Well, uh, good luck to those guys. I know those guys. And, uh, you know, it's a, even when you get beat up a little bit, as an entrepreneur, you learn, and the wounds heal, and you come back stronger. So good luck to the team oh, over there. And they're going to a good home, right? It's, my, it's part of MySpace. MySpace knows music. Yeah, MySpace and is a great And from what I understand, so. two-thirds of the employees keep their jobs. Yeah, th it seems like a talent grab is right. really the, the yeah. situation more than Plus, anything else. Plus, Mike Jones is there. I don't know if you've had him yeah, on the Mike program. Yeah, Mike Jones is great. I've great been, uh, Mike Jones, we did have him on the program for a live thing. Mike's awesome. Mm -hmm. I actually really believe, what do you think was going to happen over at MySpace? Well, I think Mike has his hands full, uh, yeah. no doubt. Uh, but it actually sounds like an interesting strategy that yeah. they have, uh, and it's just it's not from him. Just what I've read what and what read. I said, right? That they are, uh, you know, just becoming an entertainment uh, yeah. company. I, I think it makes sense uh, as opposed to saying, "Hey, let's go fight Facebook." So I think it's actually quite smart. Yeah, music, movies, yeah. television. They got all. They have all those assets. Plug it into the social network, yeah. and you've got a great product. I, yeah. They have a. They have a couple of surprise. I don't. I don't want to say I don't have inside information. I do have inside information, but what I'm about to say is not part of that inside information. But uh, they're going to come out with some stuff that's going to be pretty 
slick. Yeah. But that is kind of inside information. But they're going to drop something in the next six months mm -hmm. that is going to make people go, oh, MySpace has it going on. There's going to be something with social and entertainment media together that will make people go, this, there's a reason to visit this site again. Interesting. Yeah. I have not been to MySpace in a while. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I tell you, when I went to MySpace recently, uh, they got Twitter integration working. Yes. And people started replying to my Twitter stream over there, so I went. Mm. And they got product. Mike's a product guy. They're actually, right. if you go over and check out the MySpace product, it actually uh, is fast again. They're actually fixing all the technology problems, so it's faster. That's nice. Yeah. Okay, all those next story. Three banners or something yeah. like that. Google Phone. As CNET puts it, the rumors of a forthcoming Google Phone just refuse to die. Yeah. TechCrunch reports that Google is going to release its own branded Android phone in early 2010. Michael Arrington is suggesting that the phone may be data only. You would use Google Voice on it. Yep. You wouldn't have a wireless carrier. Uh, will Google release their own phone, and how will this affect Google's relationships with handset manufacturers who have spent the last year developing their own Android phones? Um, it's quite possible they could come out with one. Uh, if they were to ankle it without the um, regular phone network on it, that would be a great compromise. Uh, Google could, in fact, give it away for free. Uh, or at a severely discounted price. Mm -hmm. uh, they could give it to people with Google App Engine or something like that. You know, sure. uh, So I, I think it's a definite possibility. Uh, and Google Android, I got the Andro I got the Droid phone. Right, the Motorola. Uh, so now I carry three phones with me. Uh, it's an amazing phone. It will, I think the, the Droid platform will have many, many more users than the iPhone platform. I know oh. that's not a popular thing to say, but when you type in your Gmail address mm -hmm. into it and you all of a sudden, it syncs your contacts, your calendar, everything. It's a very powerful experience to log into a phone and everything's there, uh, let alone documents, Excel files, et cetera. So what do you use? You use BlackBerry. Uh, you know, I, I wish I did. I, I'm actually I'm using HTC product, which I'm not crazy about. Mm. Um, uh, for two reasons. A, I lived in the mountains here and there's yeah. only coverage through one provider. Right. Uh, but also, there's this company that I've invested in, I visit, which have a really killer uh, application for uh, for phones and it runs well on Windows C. They're transferring to other uh, platforms. What's it called? I visit? I visit, yeah. And what is it? Well, iVisit is, is actually a really great site. Uh, they're a great product. They have, they have collaboration tools, but what's great about it is it's platform independent. So you can actually go from your laptop to a mobile or mobile to mobile. So you can have live uh, vi video stream from mobile to mobile, which is great. So you can, go, you can do like Ustream or, what, or just like Skype video over phones? Yeah, and so actually you can have conference actually with four guys at the same time. On uh, video? Yeah on, yeah, on your phone. And so like you're, you're traveling, you can, you can get into it. Wow. But it's also a lot of other applications too. So let's say somebody's oh. fixing your, your uh, construction, you want to show them something, they're somewhere else, you can now show it to them and talk to them at the same time. Oh. But beyond that, really amazing other applications which really got me super excited in this was uh, we have a lot of applications uh, for the blind, helping them uh, yeah. with their. Uh, so it's really amazing. I'm looking at it right now. Pull up, pull up my screen for a second. I yeah. uh, see it. You can, yeah. you, so you, you could be on your Windows mobile phone. I could be on my laptop, another person on their desktop, and we're all sharing a document or something. And right, all that good stuff. Yeah. Sort of like your, you know, your callers coming with Skype. They could be yeah. calling them with the guys to show you the. Mm. You know the, what's on their screen and all that good stuff. But beyond that, I mean, that's that's exciting. But that exists. But beyond yeah. that, being able to go to mobile is what's mm. interesting to me. Ah, peer and to peer. The, yeah, which is really interesting because these guys, uh, you know, the, the were really the you know founders of this on the internet, uh, the video on the internet from See You See Me days. Oh, these are See You See Me guys. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's it. See You See Me. You remember See You See Me? I've heard of it, but... Yeah. Uh, right, CCU, really CUC cool. Me was the first video conferencing on the internet, mm -hmm. and it was peer-to-peer, -peer, and it was out of a university, and it was the first major pornography application in video, because what they would do is people, you know, this whole, like, sex shows on it or whatever, but you could have 20 people peering their video. It was crazy. Wow. Right. I mean, I can't... What have ever happened? I can't happened? believe I never heard of this. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a video orgy. Uh, it was literally a video orgy at times. I mean, you, you, yeah. you would turn it on, and if you went to the wrong place, you would just see, like, five penises. You'd be like, oh, I really <laughs> didn't need to see that. It was... <laughs> yeah. Uh, do we have to... 
And then we don't have to not. We don't have to bleep that out. I guess that's Pe okay. Penises? penises? No, it's that's, okay. That's a perfect. No, it's a five. Word. I was worried about. <laughs> Does right. that get you the explicit you can rating? About three penises or less. Once on iTunes that, before yeah. I get the explicit. But when does Steve Jobs not allow this to be in the iTunes store? <laughs> How many penises? Yeah. Um, so anyway, I think. Um, I visit looks very interesting. Yeah, uh, where are they based? Is Israeli? They're or? actually not. They're down here, down really? in, in, yeah, in Santa Monica, down in Colorado. Interesting. The Company I don't know about. We may have yes. to book these guys on the show. Um, they're local. So it's possible Google will do that. I mean, the bigger news is obviously the operating system, Google Chrome OS. Uh, they had a video conference about it today, and um, that's going to be. I mean, I, I in 2006 I wrote an editorial about them launching an office right. competitor. Is that in the news? I, I didn't. I didn't no. put that in the news. I figured it just it was happened. It just happened an hour ago. But yeah. uh, Google, uh, 2006. I saw Larry Page speak at CES, mm -hmm. and I knew they were going to launch an office. So I asked them, "Are you going to launch an office and an operating system?" Right. Yeah. And they were like, uh, "No. Why would we do that? We're not. We're in a search company. Yeah. Just yeah, outright lie." <laughs> it was great. <laughs> I love when people do that. Uh, but today they launched their operating system. I don't know if you saw it, but it's going to be for Netflix. No, I haven't actually. That's interesting. So it's Netbook yeah. operating system only boots. Uh, only works on flash drives, solid state drives. Will not boot on a hard drive, will not right. boot floppy. Everything kept in the cloud, mm -hmm. encrypted, boots up in like six seconds, seven seconds. Oh, that is. Loads applications in three seconds. All the applications are browser tabs. Yeah. So each application cannot affect another one. So if your browser tab, you know, tries to, and none of them can do anything malicious because they don't have system level access. They have to be only on a tab. So it's going to. It's going to hit the desktops. Yeah. 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 Booting up in six seconds, I'm mean, like, how great is that? Seriously. Do they get uh, it? These guys get it. Google is a scary company it in that is. regard. Yeah. Yeah. I, I predict now, I predicted the Google OS in Office in 2006. Mm -hmm. I am telling you right now, Google will have a PC. And the PC will be ad supported and essentially free. So you'll buy, you'll subscribe to Google PC for five bucks a month. Mm -hmm. They'll send you a PC, netbook for five bucks a month. And it will come with their WiMAX. They'll, they'll buy some. Wireless network where they'll bundle it with AT and T, five five ten bucks a month you get a lap ten bucks a month you get a laptop AT and T service at one speed fifteen dollars a month at the highest speed. They're essentially making computing free. They have a little bug about this, right. you know the one laptop per child thing. Yeah, it's inevitable. Uh, so they just th want to control every every level. You're thinking they're they're vertically uh, no. integrating. No, uh, I think what they want to do is they want to destroy the other companies. Uh, Eric Schmidt wants to destroy. Steve Ballmer. It's very personal. Right. Steve Ballmer tried to destroy Eric Schmidt at Novell and succeeded. Steve Ballmer famously s told somebody who was leaving to go to Google that he will destroy Eric Schmidt again and that he had done it before. So Eric Schmidt wants to destroy Microsoft. That is my belief. It's a very personal thing. Mm -hmm. That's why they launched an office competitor. That's why they launched an OS. They want to take their revenue streams. Mm -hmm. That's how they make 99% of their money. Right. Office and OS. And, and the OS on the phones. Right, yeah. They're making all of those free and open source. They're basically taking the way their competitors make money and destroying it. Hmm. And you think so? That you think that a lot of the direction Google's going as a company is based on this personal vendetta rivalry between Schmidt and uh, absolutely. Walmart. One hundred percent, Google people hate Microsoft and want to destroy it. Interesting. That's I, I don't. It, it's not even that I am hypothesizing about that. It's that I know that <laughs> there was a very big personal grudge match between Eric Schmidt and. Steve Ballmer. But you sound surprised. Countries go to war on personal stuff. Well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> of course. These are just. Um, I just think like, whenever there's big Google news, people always try to come up with, like, well, what's the angle? What's well, the why is, why do you think Microsoft bought Yahoo and is trying so desperately to get into search? I mean, they, they realize they have to go into where Google is with advertising because right, yeah. Google's attacking their base. If Google is successful and they get 50% of market share in search, then guess what? They've negated Google. The only way for them to stop what Google is doing is to get into Google's business. Right. That's why they're desperate. That's why they, the Yahoo deal, after two, three years of back and forth, finally got done. I mean, it's, it's, it's very personal. I mean, and it's also there's a lot of money at stake. Yes, right. But it's, it's like anything else. And if we're playing poker, I raise, even if I don't have something, because I'm trying to get you to fold. You re-raise, try to get me to fold. Right. It's just this escalation, you know? It's like war, you know? I'm going to put a bunch of troops on the border. You put a bunch of troops on the border and some missiles. Great, I'm going to put some tanks. You put the tanks, you're going to send some planes over my side. It's escalating. And you know who, the, you know who wins in all this? Consumers. The consumer, right. People because, get free laptops. And this is why competition is fantastic. This is why America is the greatest country in the world. Because we have competition. We want to kill each other. We have vendettas. 
we're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're led by maniacal CEOs who want to compete. So it would have been dead has made the country the greatest. Sicily would be the greatest country. It's not a bad country. <laughs> it's a good, people, it's a good country. Where do people well, go on their honeymoon? The What's the best place to go in <laughs> Europe? By the way, the it's best Italy. one of those came to the United States. So the yeah, that, there you go. Right. Honestly, if you go to the they immigrated best, here, right? Tyler, best here. place to go on vacation in Europe? Italy. It is, but actually, you know, I was in Sicily about three months ago. Really? For two weeks. Uh, Absolutely. Did you have a good time? I did, but See? I didn't get the sense I, that they're they taking over the world. So. No, they're, they're, they're past it. They, they just want to it's too hot. eat, it and is. they want to talk to beautiful women. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they know what they're doing. Yeah, pizza. But, you know, they're yeah. also yeah. breeding really large mosquitoes. I think that's, the, that's their really? secret. Yeah, I mean, it was painful, but that's another day. Oh, another <laughs> story. Large mosquitoes in Italy. That was really bad. Um, no, but this competition, this rabid competition, I mean, look at it this way. Steve Ballmer, Eric Schmidt, billionaires many times over. They're, f I don't know, how old are they, 55, 60 years old now? 55? Yeah, I mean, they're 50s. I would, I would peg them at the 50s. 50s. They're still fighting like cats and dogs? I mean, they started in the 80s. Yeah. It's 30 years later. Hang it up, guys. Bomber does seem like a guy that's going to hold a, hold a grudge. He threw a chair <laughs> in the like same meeting. You get that vibe from him. Reportedly, the same meeting where he said, I have destroyed Eric Schmidt, mm -hmm. I'll do it again. He reportedly threw a chair across the room and broke wow. it. This is, can you imagine you're in the room with one of your senior vice presidents, you throw a chair and break it? I mean, I've thrown chairs. I don't yeah, break so, them, right? So I, I, that, that part I'm always yeah. careful not to break the chairs. Never. That's expensive. Directly at someone. Never. Hear them. I don't Snapped know, at you the other day. <laughs> there, there may be an opportunity here for a beer summit. Maybe you can arrange I could do a beer summit <laughs> between those people. Yes. Yeah, that would be good. Steve Ballmer and Eric Schmidt, welcome to the Calacanis Ice Tea Summit. Yeah, a little... Oh, Arnold Palmer. Oh, oh, Arnold Palmer was that. Arnold that'll Palmer settled any dispute. Absolutely. Uh, somebody asked at the OS launching today if it was going to work with Microsoft Silverlight. They made a funny comment about, <laughs> we have no comment about working with Microsoft. Or, or no, they specifically said, we're going to be making it available to work with as many things as possible in open format, yeah. but we have no comment about working with Microsoft. <laughs> hey -oh. um, But you know what I have a comment on? <laughs> Audible.com. It was a pretty good segue, huh? You know, you know who else also wins out of the Microsoft Google? Who's set? that? Don Dodge. Don Dodge <laughs> wins. Yes. Yes. Congratulations to Don Dodge, formerly of Microsoft, got laid off. Two weeks later, he's at Google. No, 90 minutes later. Well, of course, right. Two weeks later, they announced, but 90 minutes later. Soon um, after. Our show is sponsored in part by Audible, uh, one of my favorite uh, companies on the web, one of my favorite places to go. And starting this Sunday, a special Thanksgiving promotion for new customers. This is for the new customers. They get a free book. And there are no strings attached. No strings attached. You just go this Sunday to audible.com slash Thanksgiving. But you have to know that secret URL. Audible.com Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And I don't want you tweeting it right now because this is a secret URL. Audible.com slash Thanksgiving. You can tweet it if you put pound twist at the end. Oh, only. Only, only. if you put pound <laughs> twist on the end. Yeah. And thank Audible for sponsoring this week in startups. Great content like this with tons of people and lights. I mean, this, this, this studio costs 50 large, five high societies. Five, that's five buy-ins for the World Series of Poker Main Event. It's, it's not cheap. It's a professional studio. It is. It's I'm nice. quite impressive. Uh, and the reason we're able to do a professional show like this with good sound and good audio is because of the fine people at audible.com. And of course, if you are um, already a member, go check out, or anybody can check this out, actually, the, the book, The Copper Bracelet, uh, which is available. Twist viewers can get the first chapter free and a special discount on the whole book by going to audible.com slash twist copper t-w-i-s-t-c-o-p-p-e-r but remember that other one audible.com slash thanks thanksgiving yeah and it would be help if on sunday you guys tweeted that for them so on sunday you can do it now audible.com slash thanksgiving free book no strings attached pretty awesome thank Thanks you audible. no they don't have to sign up no credit card nothing no, just grab don't the book up at all? wow uh no strings attached you just go, new customer, and maybe you have to give them your email, whatever, because you've got to download it. But when you do it, you'll see how good the thing is. Because like, I forgot to download a book the other month, mm -hmm. and you know you get the credit every month. Yeah. You think, oh, my God, I lost my credit? No. No, no, they roll You got it your over. two. You roll it yeah. over. So I got two credits. Now I'm just debating what book to get. I got two credits, which I need go, because we're having... Going Rogue, the, available now. I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to listen to Going Rogue, please. <laughs> I do, I do, I'm <laughs> trying to gain <laughs> IQ points available as I get older. Now. Not lose IQ points. But the interesting thing is, I got the Thanksgiving holiday. Mm -hmm. Perfect time to go yeah, listen well, to an audio book. Traveling. Traveling. Like, you heard the yeah. guy on the phone. He's, you know, he's on his yeah. car constantly. Anyway, next news story. 
We finish uh, up. Let's talk about Tweet Photo. Earlier this month, Dan Caulfield, he was then the CEO of Tweet Photo, did an interview with the podcast The Frank Peter Show. During the interview, he reveals some secret information about some partnerships. They, he gets fired. Uh, but here's where it gets interesting. Tweet Photo is now threatening to sue Frank Peters for putting the interview up because it had some of the sensitive information in right. it. Right. Uh, thinking they have a leg to stand on legally. I mean, it was on the record. The, got, the CEO consented to be interviewed. Um, this is uh, stupid people being advised by stupid lawyers. I mean, if, you, if your CEO gives it, if I give an interview and I reveal something I'm not supposed to, mm -hmm. and Sequoia or News Corp or one of our investors doesn't like it, they call me and say, why did you do that? I explain why I did it. They fire me if it's not a good enough reason. Mm -hmm. uh, or... Uh, and then that's it. They deal with it. But you can't go the guy who gave the podcast. Yeah, their their tweet photo is this now is threatening they, to sue Frank Peters. Okay, so here's show it is. message message for <laughs> lawyer of tweet photo. Somebody cut this right here. Sim Scott Simco of startup uh, message to lawyers of tweet pick tweet photo tweet it's photo. A, it's a more powerful. Version. Yeah, I say tweet photo. Don't be idiots. Write an apology letter. Say an overzealous associate made the wrong call, you apologize, and you're sending a fruit basket to the podcaster, as well as a one-year subscription to audible.com. <laughs> as a public and outspoken CEO, does this, does this ever concern you? Are you ever afraid I'm you're never, slip? I'm never, no. I'm, I, you th when you're a CEO, you think about what you say. Mm -hmm. If I seem too casual or I say something, it's usually premeditated. Right. I mean, right. I'm not a schmuck. Uh, and if this guy got fired for saying something like that, he probably wasn't, that's probably an excuse for firing him. They probably had some other problem with him. Like, if I made a mistake, trust me, I made a lot of mistakes. I mean, when the, when the Koretsu people are calling people associated with me who are investors mm -hmm. and telling them they're going to sue me because I said something about them, trust me, I get those phone calls. Uh, but they're not going to fire me. They, you know how hard it is to find a replacement CEO? This guy had to really suck in order to get fired for making a mistake. And I, supposedly, he, all he said was that he had some partnership with some company. Yeah, he revealed, uh, that's what the Read Write Web article said. He revealed secret information about new partnerships. Who cares? I mean, if he, so if CEO slips, I mean, I don't know. CEO slips. Yeah, I mean, it happens no all the time. But what's interesting is that I wonder if there's an opportunity to sue the company for hiring the CEO. Isn't that more of an issue there? Yeah. Than, I mean, <laughs> than maybe. Somebody you smart, you fire, yeah, I don't know. Fire just, I don't know. Smart. It just it seems a little over. I mean, over also, the top. like, really? I mean, you're a photo site? I mean, get over yourself. Yeah. I mean, really? What partnership could it possibly have been? Yeah, really? It's so important. Yeah. Really? We're, gonna, uh, we're buying our storage <laughs> from S3, you know? Like, yeah, oh, know. gosh, really? Not from Rackspace? My God. Nobody cares about your company. Get over yourselves. I mean, they're acting like they're Apple. Yeah, I had to, I had to look it up. So I hadn't heard of Tweet Photo. Yeah, I, of I thought, well, you thought TwitPick, the first thing you think of when you hear about pick. a Twitter photo. Right, so the, the, the TwitPick knockoff is suing themselves and a podcaster. No, they're, suing, they're suing Frank Peters, who does the who hosts the Frank Peters show, All who right. just interviewed the CEO. I, seems seems a little odd. Seems a little odd that you would. It seems really uh, usually there's more, I cannot imagine. There must be more to it than that. This, I, I just just seems over the top. Yeah, it's just, really crazy. Anyway, final story. Oh, final story. Let me see. This guy's kind of busy, man. Okay, he's got, he's got, okay. He's an angel I got, investor. I got, this guy's got a, I got a tea off bunch time of stuff. We'll come up with something What's good. What's your tea time? Uh, I don't play, play golf, so right? you'll be... Uh, no, no tea time. <laughs> let's, let's check out Factory, uh, Factory Labs. F-A-C-T-E-R-Y. Factory. F-A-C-T-E-R-Y? Yeah. Factory Labs. Oh, oh Factory Labs, excuse me. Um, no they are a search company. They've produced a, what they call a fact-based search API. Okay. Uh, search terms are input into the system. It comes through Yahoo Boss. It comes through Twitter. Sure. It comes up with sentences in plain English about those terms. So I did a search for Jason Calacanis mm -hmm. to test it out. Uh, it mentioned that you are the CEO of Mahalo. It mentioned that you were born in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. It mentioned that you were starting a company called the Open Angel Forum. So with all the talk of content providers pulling data in from Google, it seems like they're really going to hate this because it basically gives all the information away right away. Uh, you have to go to their, yeah, their whatever yeah, yeah. their new product is. Uh, um, but is a few sentences of factual information really what people want from search? Not really, um, but this could be used other ways to build semantic data. Um, there was a company, uh, what was the company in England we went to see, or that we met with? Um, what's the name of that company? They were doing the phrases. Knowledge. Knowledge, something. Anyway, a lot of people have tried to do this semantic. Mm -hmm. Typically what they're doing is they're going to the facts section of um, the DBpedia, which is the database based on Wikipedia, right. and just saying, tell me all the facts about Jason Calacanis. If I didn't have a Wikipedia page, that wouldn't have worked. 
they're just p scraping the Wikipedia's facts. Yeah, I, so I, it I seems tried, I tried myself, and I don't have a Wikipedia page because right. it redirects to Mahalo.com for some crazy, crazy. reason. Crazy. Uh, but, you know, it came up with some stuff. It, came, it, came, it had a few. Twitter, it also looks in Twitter. So okay. my so, Twitter bio. Yeah, and people, Twitter bio things has people say about your me. age. It had, the, you know, Mahalo Daily on it. had This Week in yeah. Startup. So they're, they're, they're going to look for Lon Harris is and then pull that information in. Right. And so it's interesting, but I don't think that's the way people want to search, to be honest. But they, you, this could be something that we could use this to pull in facts to Mahalo, maybe. Right. I mean, it is an um, API. It's designed to be part of a larger yeah. product. Yeah. yeah so a lot of people have d discussed this. Like, you know, There's another company uh, called um, Freebase, mm -hmm. which is taking all the public free databases and putting them together in one knowledge engine. Unfortunately, when you're looking for knowledge, a lot of times you want something like, what's the best stereo for my you know, backyard mm -hmm. that's waterproof and that I can use you know, with these RCA cables or whatever. And, and that's where best covery comes in. Exactly. You know, um, you know something else. You know? So yeah, it doesn't right. actually work. The, you know, not everything is, you know, I need the answer to this question. And it's a one word answer. Right. It's a, the answer to every question in life is not 42, or whatever it is. What was in the um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Yeah, I think that's 42. 40, 41, 40. 42, okay. Yeah, I, was, right. I, I was about to ask a nerd to give me the answer of that, and I got it um, <laughs> from Alex. Uh, but that, I mean, that's why we have nerds on the planet. Yes, that's what the this, repositories this, of uh, The real problem with this, with this factory labs is that for people who have insignificant information about pop culture like yourself, Lon, or, yes. or science fiction like Alex, uh, now or fashion like Tyler, I mean, they're going to be out of business. Yeah, IMDb really screwed me up there. I used to really be able to impress people. Now it's like now yeah. it's like you, anybody can look at. I got up. the IMDb. Yeah, people look on their on, on their people are like. Oh yeah, I loved him in that, and then like got the IMDb on their yeah, iPhone. Right. I also liked him in. Knowing all the movies Don the Dragon Wilson was in is not impressive anymore. You can just look it up. Yeah, it's really a shame. Mm. Final story. One more. Let's uh, let's talk about uh, Tech Meme. Ah, uh, Tech Meme. Tech Meme has added three more human editors to the site, including. Former This Week in Startups newsman, Rich DeMuro. Excellent. They're giving the site 24-hour editorial coverage of tech news. Mm. So the initial decision to add a human editor to TechMe was somewhat controversial at the time. Has Gabe Rivera been vindicated? Um, yes. Uh, Has it made the site he was always better? He was always massaging it, just like Dig was always massaging their homepage. Mm -hmm. uh, if you let these aggregators be a total free-for-all, they become a total free-for-all. Right. Uh, but he's not doing original reporting. No, there's no published to tech meme. They're, these are literally just editors looking over what's coming in and highlighting things and pushing them up the page. Uh, and I think a lot of these boxes too on the side where they yeah. have like here are the five top stories. Well, I mean, it was like you were saying before, right? I mean, curation. There's too much noise out there, and somebody needs to curate all this stuff. Right. It's a it, curation is a big trend. In a world where everything is available, and everything you don't want is available, I mean, there are literally. 20 good places right now to get a review of a movie. 20. If you were going to try to pick your movie this weekend, you could go to IMDb, you can go to Rotten Tomatoes, you can go to Metacritic. There are a Roger Ebert site, you can go to Twitter. Mm -hmm. There's a million places you can go. So it's almost like drowning in opportunity, you know. It's like just too many good choices. It's like television in that way. I mean, there are so many good series right now. If you asked yeah. everybody what their favorite series was and you made a list, you'd have like probably what, 20 good series on right now of there quality? More. I can't I can never keep up. There's probably about this is why TV is going through a sort of a renaissance right now. There's probably 20 shows on TV that are worth watching, sure. and that are high quality. Now, who's got the time to watch 20 shows a week? Yeah, Sons of Anarchy and Breaking Bad. I can never quite get to. I don't have yeah, time. I would like to watch Sons of Anarchy. Sure, Me biker too. guys. Yeah, dealing, dealing be, meth. It's supposed sure. to be great. It's the Shield guys doing. I it. love the Shield. Big Shield thing. But that's. I mean, I watched the first season of Mad Men. I couldn't keep up. Everybody keeps telling me to watch Dexter. I can't keep up. Dexter's awesome. There's sure too many good TV shows. There are. Yeah, there's a glut right now. There's too many. Anyway, you watch a lot of TV? Unfortunately, I don't. Uh, of all those, I only knew Dexter, so <laughs> of all those programs, so. Uh, no TV, you got a family. You know, no, it's not that. It's just like, I don't want to watch anything that is continuous. <laughs> I want to see like, ah. shit, you know, like yeah, just one MTV thing. kind of thing. You know, short three minutes, I got And then you're yeah, done. I'm yeah. done and move to the next thing. You just right. don't have to follow characters and all that. It does become, I find it's now become a burden. It, it, well, yeah, the shows, I, I, the PVRs are going to be looked back on as like, you know, like this terrible invention because you, you have an obligation to finish it. Like I look yeah. at my PVR and I, I put that list and I'm like, I'm obligated to clear this. It's like now I have another inbox. Basically, yeah. And it's, uh, 
I hesitate before I start a new show now. People tell you, oh, this is great, and then you're going to watch the first episode, yeah. and then you have to stop yourself. Like, oh, if I like it, I'm in for months. It's too much. It's too much. But Way there are much. once in a while, The Sopranos was... Yeah, the Sopranos. Sopranos. How could you not watch that? Yeah. <laughs> That's how I felt about The Shield, too, was another one like I'd that. say Lost, too, in there. I mean, Lost had a couple so. weak years, but then I got back into it. <laughs> it's great. Six, Thank God, one, today. one season left. February 2nd. The new season starts February 2nd. Yeah, they just announced it today. Thank God they're ending it. They should actually, that would be a good thing for the government to do and get involved. <laughs> End in. loss. Well, now that, now that Obama's, you know, he's got everything taken care of and, you know, it's Right, everything's it's great. So now they can focus on the important Something thing. maybe just a more, like they should have a term limit for series. That's not a bad idea. Seven years. Well, because if you can't tell the story in seven years, that's it. You, you yeah, get, that's, uh, that's seven years and you can have two spin offs. Well, I mean, but there's like The Simpsons. People still love it. It's going. Uh, no, they should stop. They should have stopped it. I agree. They should have stopped. It would have become the honeymoons, the honeymooners, if, it, if they stopped it. Mm -hmm. It would have been a classic. Twilight Zone. Good at 120 episodes. Imagine there's 500. Yeah. Then you'd be it trying does, to fight. It tends, it tends to go on. Yeah, Star it, Trek. There's got to be a good counter. Star example. Trek had a good run, and that's it. Now everybody talks about those episodes. Can you imagine if Star Trek had the same number of episodes as Simpsons? Yeah. Star what Trek actually, yeah, ran out of steam. Yeah. Really quick. Exactly. Twin okay. Pig style. Uh, so this has been an amazing show, As Cameron. Always. Thanks for coming. It was You're great. A great guest. I think it was, it was a lot of fun, and yeah. uh, got to talk about movies even. So that's yeah, great. little movies. <laughs> and uh, good luck with best covery. Everybody uh, who's listening, uh, if you are listening to the show, you have an obligation. Uh, it is your geary uh, to uh, tweet, checking out best covery. And look at somebody actually did, and they put at best covery. Uh, that is the uh, Twitter account too, right? Yeah, you have the Twitter account. So everybody go uh, follow Bestcovery, everybody uh, follow them, everybody retweet their domain and go check it out, give them some advice on what you think of it. Wow, 8,500 followers, doing pretty good on Twitter. Yeah, we are, we are actually lucky enough that a lot of people are following us, that's good. Does it drive a little traffic? Or? It does, but uh, you know, 100, it's not, 200 it's, people? Yeah, it, it, it's not bad, but we're just proud of uh, the fact that so many people have decided to, to follow us, that's good. Yeah, it's great, and you probably uh, interact with the audience there, I see you're talking to different people. Uh, through it, so that's great. Brand is actually communicating. Thanks to our sponsors, DNA Mail, Ustream, Audible underscore com, and who did I leave out? WebSpy. Um, thanks, Alex, Tyler, for your incredible insights. I have a little insight. Go ahead. This Microsoft Google thing? Yeah. I'm still thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's typically how your insights go. It's like a wheelchair at Disney. Uh, <laughs> actually, if your point about Google making a laptop I don't think it's necessarily the best way for Google to compete with Microsoft. The real damage that they're doing is sinisterly genius is that they're offering what Microsoft does, which is the OS and Office, not just for free now. Well, in the case of the Office, it's free. You have yep. Google Docs. But in the case of the OS, they have a, a plan, so I hear, where they're going to pay the hardware manufacturers, the laptop manufacturers, yeah. a percentage of the search revenue that they You heard get. that from me. No, I didn't hear it from you. Oh, because I've said that before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but now the laptop manufacturers are faced with pay Microsoft 58 bucks for the license. Or get paid. Or get paid from Yeah, Google. absolutely. Yeah, so Dell puts the operating system on there and gets half the AdSense revenue. They'd be pretty stoked. Right. So now how, how does Microsoft compete with that? Exactly? They have to buy other search engines. They've got to get an ad network going, and they've got to do exactly what they're doing. They've got to offer, their, they got to offer a piece of that action to the uh, hardware manufacturers for... Yeah. All right. Well, they, but they're not really going to be able to sell Windows at 50. Well, I mean, Google's oh. Google's operating system is going to be very limited. They're not going to have, you know, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 running on it. Put it that way. So there is some complications to it. Um, thanks, Lon. You did a good job on the news, as always. I appreciate it. Uh, openangelforum.com. I don't want to talk about it too much, but let's just say, uh, Cameron, you're going to be in the angel group. Mm -hmm. You've got tons of cash. You invest in a dozen, you've invested in 15 companies, so you're a legitimate angel investor. I've only invested in three, so not so much. Uh, but Sky Dayton's in there, Matt Kaufman's in there, Kevin Rose. We've got a good group to start. That's great. It's going to be, well, what I'm trying to basically do is uh, make it better than the other product that's in the market and make it free. So I think if it's free and better, then it's going to do well. I don't know. You're up. I was about to I'm kind of do, I'm kind of Googling to Kiretu Forums Microsoft. I've heard that concept somewhere. Yeah. So it works. So basically it they're works. trying to do So if you're interested in uh, getting involved in that, you go to openangelforum.com. It would be good if all you guys link to it and give it some Google juice and tweet it. Uh, but people are signing up and we're going to try to do our first event in the first quarter of 2000 What's the next year? 2010? 2010. 
first quarter of 2010, maybe February or something like that, we'll do our first breakfast with four or five startups presenting. And then in the second quarter, we'll try to do it in two more cities. Mm -hmm. Then we'll roll out two cities every quarter after that. So I just need to get entrepreneurs and VC, uh, the entrepreneurs and angel investors in each city. In other cities, right. When I get, I'm going to do it here first because I know people, but when I get sure. to 10 angel investors or so mm -hmm. interested in each city, then I'll launch it in that city. And I'll, co I'll come and host a breakfast. And then the people who are the angel investors, like you could bring a company that you've already angel invested yeah, in. You say, hey, Jason, I got this company I already invested in. Would you put them into your angel network? And I'll say, yeah, okay. I'll send them to the San Francisco, San Diego, Austin, and New York chapters. And they do a little roadshow. And you know how much you charge them for that roadshow? Zero. Zero. And if you do uh, six cities, we give you the seventh one free. That's great. I love so, it. It's a pretty good deal for everybody involved. Uh, wow, thanks, everybody. And we'll see you on the next episode of This Week in Startups. With this